Uh, we're oh, there we are. All right, everybody, what's up? Welcome to the hot seat, everybody. Your Thursday night addiction, guys. We're so so excited for you to be here today. Sorry, we're running a little bit late. I was, I did have to do my hair. Uh, unfortunately, the, the razor bro broke halfway through, so um, <laughs> we are we are back on track, guys. We have a great guest tonight, and and uh, I will go into talking about Matt. Uh, as soon as possible, but we got to give due where dues needed to be given. So, Daddy Dutch Barbecue, Kent, my co host with the most, say hi to the people. Hey, brother, how are you? Damn it! Ha! It was you this time. I thought All I had right. it. All right, so Matt, little backstory. Usually, one of us leave our YouTube on with the sound. We not only do we have our stream art up, we have our YouTube up too. So we can watch the chat. And uh yeah, <laughs> usually it happens where it starts running as we go live. So it's just, it's just one of those things you think after what, two and a half years we'd figure this figure this it out. out. That's all good. This is, this is a highly professional interview show. Like anyway. All right. I left mine on. Yeah, I love it that it's you, man. Anyway. <laughs> All right, uh, before we get to uh, Dutch, I did forget to mention our illustrious, <clears throat> excuse me, our illustrious sponsor, Uncle Steve Shake. Steve is the man who's rocking his gear. Look, you got that shirt on. Five bucks, you got that shirt tucked in right now. Nope. Nah, back up. Back up. Why? You don't believe me? It's tucked in, baby. <laughs> anyway, all right. So, Dutch, why don't you say, uh, finish saying hi to the people? Oh, you just pulled it out. Look at no. all the wrinkles. Look at all the wrinkles. Anyway. I never tuck my shirts in. You know better than that. Yeah. Huh? All right. Go for it, Bob. All right. Uh, hey, Matt, welcome. Uh, it's going to be a pleasure getting to know you a little bit better tonight. I do have a couple questions for you from uh, a very intelligent member of this community, just so you know. And uh <laughs> Just saw Kent pull it out. Yeah, nice hobo. Nice. Nice hashtag. <laughs> um, before we get started, I do want to address everybody in the chat. A lot of you know a supporter of most of ours from North Carolina, Delana and Wally Burcham. Uh, Delana messaged me earlier today, and uh, unfortunately, it's not the news I like to give. Uh, Wally came down with COVID on the 8th and passed on Tuesday. So if you guys can reach out to Delana, or to Delana and uh, give her some positive thoughts, I think it'll really help. Yeah. So, Yeah, they're, they're, they are and were great supporters of a lot of the people in the community here. So it's a very sad situation and indicative of kind of what's going on in America right now. So yeah. like I always say, when we end our show, wash your hands, put your damn mask on and don't, you know, crowd people, you know, it's just one of those things. So, uh, I don't know, you know, how we could really kind of get happy after that, but we're going to try. And yes, we are. A tough thing to do, but, uh, uh, you know, we're fun. Yeah, it's just one of those things. We got to kind of move on with that. You know, we, we appreciate all their uh, their support and all that. But, you know, show yeah. must go on, right, Matt? So, all right. Can, any, any other good news you want to freaking throw out there and kill the vibe tonight? I don't know. Is there anything I'm missing? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't think so. I think, uh, well, I think, I think I kicked my dog by accident. I stepped on one of the cats. And I'm pretty sure I fed arsenic to the goldfish. To the goldfish? That poor bastard never did anything to you, man. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. right. Are you, can I get back into the swing of things over here, Bob? Well, yeah, fine. Whatever. Act like it's your show. That's fine. Okay, I will. Anyway, okay. all right. So as you guys know, we are on three different mediums right now. We are... Um, <laughs> We're on Facebook, we're on CJ's Q, and we're on Cooking with CJ right now. So make sure, no matter which one you're on, hit that thumbs up and uh, like it, share it, all that good jazz. And I just dropped a pin. Anyway, all right, so people in the chat, 
We got Mimi S jumped in there. Keith Betag is always keeping score. Sipping and grilling with King Tut. Jimmy Sobreros, what's up, buddy? Blast from the past, old high school days. What's up, buddy? I, I that was the fastest white boy I've ever played against, man. I could never catch that guy. Anyway, um, let's see here. Uh, Mario, what's up? Now you know why you were a lineman. Yeah, well, that's all right. Here too. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, Hobo Nickel Barbecue's in there. Uncle Steve Shake is always – he's in there too. Uh, <clears throat> let's see here. Tyler Condry's in there chilling grilling with Cole Men. What's up? The Al Dente Diva. Yes, I am a follower on TikTok. Love what you do. I love it that you give Matt so much shit. <laughs> it's been awesome. Uh, let's see here. Dad Life's in there. Smoky Goodness. I think I said you. Cook It, Erica. Tom's Food Factory. Six Brothers Meats in there. Uh, let's see here. Um, you got to uh, follow Cook It, Erica, too. Follow Cook It, Erica. I will find you after there. Erica's uh, I will girl. definitely follow you. That's my sure. sisters right there, man. Yeah. Sisters yeah. I've never had. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, man. That's so cool. Uh, let's see here. Uh, who else? Uh, sorry, I'm losing. Sipping and growing with King Tut. What's going on? Marcel is in there. Canadian Jim's in there. Steven and Jacqueline. Next week's guest, Steven and Jacqueline. So there you go. Our uh, monitors that uh, are on everybody's lives, they're actually going to be on the show, so I'm excited for that. All right. Uh, if I miss you, uh, Rick, I see you. What's up, buddy? Uh, if I miss you on this go round, I'll, I'll hit you up on the way back. Uh, Matt, are you ready for these hard hitting questions? Let's, let's rock and roll. I'm excited, man. I, I got to tell you, dude, I'm a big fan. And uh, a lot of people, you know, for this, you know, uh, you know, pandemic period, TikTok blew up, right? And uh, that's literally how I found you because I decided to be a 12 year old girl and jump on TikTok and try to learn <laughs> dances and whatnot, right? So uh, <laughs> I uh, I started trying to do some you know cooking videos on there, but for me, it just becomes this black hole. Right, you know the TikTok. Like I could be sitting there, like I'll take a few videos out, and it's four in the morning, and you're still scrolling and watching. You know, I watch a lot of uh, cooking on there for real. But uh, no, CJ's not coming out of the closet. I've already been out of the closet. Come on, guys, don't worry about me. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so I'm excited to kind of talk about that. But before we kind of get into the channels, the TikTok, YouTube, all that jazz, let's just start off with the easy things. Where are you from? Where do you reside? Where all that good stuff? So I'm in uh I'm in New Jersey, uh, South Jersey. Most people, you know, hear me talk for a cut for a minute or two on TikTok, and they tend to they tend to point out that I have an accent, which I never really realized. But I guess there's a pretty specific South Jersey accent um, that I carry with me. So uh, most people tend to know that I'm like East Coast Jersey. Um, when they watch my videos, uh, I'm in the Southern part of New Jersey. So I'm on the West side of New Jersey, um, the Jersey shore down South here, not fist pumping, uh, MTV Jersey shore. <laughs> that's, that's Al Dente Divas, uh, spot up North, but down South here, we have the Jersey shore. It's about a 40 minute ride for me, uh, Philly, which tends to get kind of blended with the South Jersey area that I'm from because we're like a 20 minute ride. We're all Eagles fans, four for four Phillies, Sixers, Flyers. And, you know, so our South Jersey area is, is all Philly sports. Um, that's what I grew up with. My dad, my brothers, my, you know, that's, that's kind of how we grew up and tailgate and every, every season. And, you know, that's kind of where this whole thing started. Um, in terms of just any kind of interest in cooking and grilling and meat was was kind of born in the parking lot at the vet and, and the link, um, just being season ticket holders for the Eagles and, and going to those games. So um, I'm a school teacher. I'm a high school teacher by day. Um, I've been teaching for God, I'm in my 19th year uh, wow. teaching, teaching now. So um that 20 the year 20 is creeping up really fast this has been a crazy year um like no other but i don't think it's ending anytime soon in terms of this school year 
Um, but I've coached basketball for, you know, the large majority of that time um, as a teacher, um, high school basketball. And uh, just recently had to give that up about four years ago. My wife is a principal at an elementary school now. Uh, mm -hmm. We're both educators, so I had to give up uh, coaching to be able to spend more time at home with my boys. Uh, I have two sons, Adric and Nash. They're six and five. Um, so, you know, giving up coaching, which was a huge part, a huge commitment, a big time suck, uh, you know, gave me more time at home with my boys, more time at home in my backyard, um, <laughs> you know, and really was part of me being present more, which resulted in, in you know, having to kind of pick up some hobbies. And, and that's kind of how the cooking thing started between being a teacher in the community and all that kind of stuff kind of just you know all came together at the right time that's awesome man. and and you pretty much just answered my next five questions so we're all good <laughs> it was uh appreciate that uh, <laughs> uh it's 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 one of those things that uh i'd love to see when you know dutch has a bunch of kids i have five kids like we are family men you know like we are very much I, I see you get your boys in there helping you cook and stuff like that. You know, we put our kids helping us on some videos too. If they're not helping me, I'm yelling at them to shut up while I'm filming. You know, other than might that, as well just let them join. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's it's one of those things that it's it really does. It's very sweet, and and I love seeing that. So uh, I wanted to. That was one of the things I would commend you on that, man. Bringing the kids in, teaching them young, giving them the the you know the skills that you've learned. You know, that's that's one of those things that you just they'll never forget. So, so look, and you guys know, like in, when it comes to working the phone and a video and stuff, our kids probably know more oh, about yeah. it than we do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they could they could probably be your videographer if you wanted them to. Oh, uh, yeah. My, my, my oldest son filmed my first few videos uh, done and they push out yeah. better content than we could. And oh, yeah, his, you know, his editing it, skills blew mine away. Yeah, it's crazy. And it, and it goes a long way. Like, I know you guys are on TikTok, too. And I get a lot of questions all the time about how, how to grow and how to, you know, be successful on there. And it's never really been there hasn't ever been any trick or anything, you know, it's just but I think doing those kind of things, showing that you're a dad, showing that you have your kids and that it's not all, you know, not everyone has has a production studio set up in their kitchen. Right. You know, some people do. Some of these huge TikTokers do. And, you know, but they're also not dads and have full time jobs and stuff like that. So I think part of that growth and success comes in knowing, like having your kids mess up a video for you, come right. in screaming and hearing it in the background because it's authentic. It's it's our life, you know, well, and, that, and T is someone that could tell you the same thing because she does the same stuff. And, you know, that's a big part of it. Yeah, and I and I think you're right. They're they're drawn to it. A, a lot of people are drawn to it to see that you know you're a family man, and you know the kids running around like they they want to see you know good whole. I don't say good wholesome. Like I'm I'm not wholesome at all. But you get what I'm saying. You know, it's not a 12 year old dancing in a skirt with their tits on, right? So it, it's it's pretty freaking cool. Um, We've got a couple more people jumped in there. Chris Stewart's in there. Pitmaster Pastor is in there. Another TikToker I follow. So that's very yeah. Cool. Those are a couple of my guys. You got to follow Chris too. He's, Chris, uh, he's Stuby Q. Stuby uh, Q. Chris, Chris you know, Stubby. I actually might follow him too. I'll well, listen. Follow if you follow, if you follow me on Instagram, he's the one that nonstop busts my balls about green peppers on cheese steaks. If you ever <laughs> see. Like well, I've seen, them, I've seen them throw like a bunch of questions in there about oh, your man. love of peppers and whether you yeah, like. Them or not. He, so, Kent, Kent will definitely uh, touch on that when he yeah, takes. That's, it. that's my guy. <laughs> uh, that's awesome, man. So, uh, Josh from Skinner Farms in there. What's up, buddy? Uh, that's uh, I think that's pretty much a kind of caught everybody up. We got 51 people watching right now. So, again, guys, make sure you're hitting that thumbs up. It helps the algorithm. Helps get things going. Um, did you uh oh Matt Gro or M Grork one one two four Matt's little brothers here? That's my brother, yeah. <laughs> awesome, awesome, very cool. Uh thank you for being here. Uh ask him about his first tattoo. All right, so <laughs> write that down. His first tattoo. 
asked by the brother. All right, behind the garage barbecue. What's up, Craig? How you doing, buddy? Uh, your brother, what's your brother's name? Mark. Mark. Okay, so yeah. Mark, he's very proud of you. So that's <laughs> that's sweet. I don't know if he's proud of your first tattoo, but we'll get into that for sure. <laughs> Uh, it's, I feel like we got a lot of side hustles in the in the in the chat side conversation. Whatever you got a good group. In those. We got a good group of people in this chat. Right I now. love it. I uh, see Ricky Foods. What's up, Ricky? How you doing, brother? Uh, I you know Ricky's on uh, uh, Instagram or all of that shit, but on uh, uh, TikTok also. Uh, there's there's a bunch of people. <laughs> Uncle Steve shakes that is it a dolphin diving into your crack? All right, so oh this this is this is gonna this is already going off the off the rails and we just got started. Oh gosh, Bowers Barbecue, what's up, buddy? Up uh, up north of sixty, what up? How you doing? Uh, that's fun. you better not have a dolphin going in your crack because you're laughing too hard at that, bro. <laughs> This is so much better than a recorded podcast. It really is. Oh, yeah. This is live, dude. This is live happening, man. We, this is so good. We make mistakes. We have fun all the time. It's, <laughs> we used to actually take uh, donations to take shots, and it got a whole lot worse off throughout oh, the year. Oh, man. I couldn't we, imagine. We stop that one. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Raspberry Rock, what's up, Russell? Thank you for being here. One of the team, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, team CJ members. Appreciate you being here, brother. Oh man! Oh, it's already starting. We're only twenty minutes in. I love it, baby. <laughs> All right, you know we have a question we always ask for. Uh, we had a lifetime subscriber, uh, so he had a lifetime question, and it's about music. What kind of music do you like? Do you play any instruments? Were you in any bands? All that good stuff. He's a big music fan. Nice so about that. Um, no, I don't play any instruments, but I wish I did. Like I always. I, uh, all right, this is totally off topic, but <laughs> I, I, it relates to the music thing, though. So for 10 plus years, I was I was a, a driving instructor for kids that get to get kids their license who had their permit. So I spent a lot of time in cars driving with 16 year old kids oh. more times than not, you know, for three hours at a time. <laughs> Some of them terrible, couldn't drive at all. Some of them, you know, maybe like we were when we were kids. I got in the car when I was 16. And I mean, my dad, I, I was driving when I was 14, you know, wow. like it was fine. But to take up three hours of time talking is, you know, kids just they have no social skills. Most of them, they can't talk or carry a conversation. So I would always have like questions in my back pocket. So I always ask kids, like, if you could be the best at anything, right, anything in the world, just be the best at it. Like, like if, if Justin Timberlake is the best entertainer in the world, yes, he is, dude. I friggin' love Justin Timberlake. You are now but, my favorite guest. But if you know, I would ask them, what What would you want to do? Would you want to be the best brain surgeon, the best, you know, philanthropist, whatever? And my answer to that is always like, I would want to be like Justin Timberlake, literally. Like, I that's who I would want to be. The dude is a rock star on Saturday, Saturday Night Live. He's hysterical. Yes, he was. He can sing. He can dance. He's handsome as all hell. He's funny. Like, that's that's what I would want to do. So to answer the music question, I'm that guy that never had any musical talent. But I wish, like, I have so much respect for people that play an instrument and sing and do it well. Like, and I'm surrounded by high school kids that have so much talent. Like I just envy, I, I don't envy much out right. of, from other people. Like I respect what other people do. I never feel like I wish I had it, but music and that talent, I really, really wish I did. And it's something that I'm going to push my kids to, you know, I'm not going to push them to play basketball. Like I, I was a basketball player. Right. I'm not going to force them to play basketball, but I'm going to force them to play the piano. I'm going to force them to pick up a guitar, you know, like they're not going to have a choice. They're going to have to play something. Um, yeah, that's awesome. You know, I took piano lessons when I was like 10, 11, 12, 10 or 11, maybe lasted two years. So yeah. I could, I could still play like the Jaws theme, <laughs> you know, stuff oh, like that. Okay. Mu music wise, I grew up like Guns N' Roses, Metallica, Alice in Chains, um, you know, all, all that just heavy metal rock. Um, I grew up with a lot of oldies, golden oldies. 
my dad, um, you know, growing up, it was just pool parties every weekend in the summer. And you had the Righteous Brothers play in and Brown Eyed Girl blast in. So it was a lot of that kind of music growing up was a big influence and classic rock. I love, I love hip hop. I mean, I, I grew up in the nineties. I'm 43 now. So yeah, I was Tupac, Tupac and you know, all those, like, I just, it, I, I listen to it all. I love reggae. I love reggae, reggae rock. Um, okay. So there's just, uh, my music taste is, is very, very broad. And if you watch my videos and hear the music I, I play in the background of my videos, it probably shows that. Like, I, yeah. I, I do a lot, you know, because I like a lot of music. I uh, love that question. That's a great question. Well, let me let me explain a little bit on it, all right? You see, you saw Dutch ready to commit Harry Carey, all right? Um, <laughs> you, uh, you see me get excited. All right, so for two and a half years, I've been asking that freaking question, right? I'm a huge fan of Justin Timberlake. I'll say it. I don't mind. love him. Right? No shame. Not one person has ever said him. I, I prod, I poke, I, you know, hey, you know, what's up? You didn't even have to prod. I didn't even have to say a word. And no that's shame. why you've elevated to my favorite guest. No shame in my game. I don't Done deal right there. <laughs> wow. oh, that's freaking awesome. All right. Got a couple more people jump in the chat. Uh, Robert Platzer. Uh, oh, Bob Platzer. That's my guy. Right. Hungry Hussy's in the chat. What's up, brother? How you doing? Mike Grork is in the chat. That's either my dad or my brother. Right on, right on. Uh, who else? A couple more people. My wife is in the chat saying hi to Kent and not saying hi to me, so that's fun. <laughs> Carlos Bradley's in the chat. What's yep. up, guys? Bunch that's of new folks in here tonight. Very excited. Uh, Alton's in there. Dogfather's Barbecue. Cry me a river. It's a freaking yo, sad. cry me a river. Did someone just create that name to pop in mm. on our chat because oh. I'm talking about Justin Timberlake? Oh, no, no. Uh, Alton from the Dog <laughs> Barbecue was saying, cry me a river. Oh, okay. All right, so there we go. <laughs> no, I hope no <laughs> that shit. Mike Cross, he says, nothing's wrong with a little bit of uh, JT. Brandon Australia, what's up? How you doing, man? Uh, who else? Who else? I think that catches everybody up. We got 49 people watching. Make sure you guys all hit that thumbs up. All right. I think I've uh, monopol monopolized you for now. Oh, it's your dad. Mike Grog is your dad in there. Hey. Hi, Christina saying hi. What's up, guys? Oh, so excited for you guys to be here. This show just turned to the next level. Justin Timberlake should be going on. If I wasn't worried about a copyright strike, we'd be hitting that up right now. <laughs> Dominic Ricci's in there. What's up? What's up, oh, man? Boy. All right. Kent, are you ready to ask some questions? I know you can't follow, but are you ready to ask some questions, Kent? No, I checked out about five minutes ago. Oh, man. See, see what happens. <laughs> he checked out at Justin Timberlake. Well, I got, I'm going. You didn't see it, but I got a bucket down here I've been vomiting in. <laughs> <laughs> Travis Graham, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Appreciate you guys being here. Oh, that's I'll did take Diva says she's bringing sexy back. You, yeah. DJ, love it. tell me you watched The Bachelor on Monday nights, and I'm gonna come over and we're we're gonna hang out. Oh man, I wish I could, but <laughs> I just, even if I did, I couldn't freaking admit it because after Justin Timberlake, it's over, man. It's just. <laughs> All right, uh, Sierra. Big Salinas is in the chat. What's up, brother? Big Salinas barbecue, chilling, chilling. Thank you guys for being here. Very excited. Oh, let's see here. All right, all right, Kent. I look at that look, man. He hasn't blinked in five all minutes. All right, let's go. Questions, Kent. Let's go. Let's go, Kent. Turn this. All up. right, I'm, I'm gonna try power through this in these horrible working condition. <laughs> horrible working conditions. <clears throat> all right. First one comes from Chris Stewart. Matt, tell us about your love of peppers. So, <laughs> all right. So this goes back to like week, week one or week two when when we played the Patriots. Um, it may have been the Patriots, one of those weeks. But every week we do pretty much a tailgate here since COVID shut down the tailgate to the stadium. I have an awesome street, awesome neighbors, and we all kind of do our social distant tailgates in our driveways, and we all get together and, you know, like eight or ten of us. 
and I, I pull out the griddle and I was making Philly cheesesteaks. All right. So my buddy has a, a buddy who's a butcher. We got some awesome Philly rolls. We got the, 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 the steak. We got the onions. We got the whiz and the, and the Cooper sharp and provolone. We had all the fixings and I'm doing, I'm doing my, my, my duty, making the cheesesteaks, just banging cheesesteaks. They were great. And my one neighbor comes out and he comes out with a little plastic, you know, deli container. All right. And he's like, Hey, Matt, Matt. Yeah. I want to put, you know, throw some of these on my steak. And it was banana peppers. Right. It was just the little sweet, right, right. Hot, like banana peppers. So I'm like, all right. So I take the banana peppers and I throw them on his cheesesteak. Well, I make a TikTok video of it, obviously. Of course. And, and I guess in like one of the shots of me panning the steaks, you could see the banana peppers on the cheese steak. Oh. So I posted it on Instagram. I posted it on TikTok. I'm tagging the Eagles and all this stuff. <laughs> um, and freaking Chris, who now I will say like respect where respect is due. Chris is like the Don of philly cheesesteaks chris is from chris is from northeast philly like he knows philly cheesesteaks the back of his hand um you know i would never ever question him in terms of what a proper cheesesteak is right um, i would take his advice a hundred times out of a hundred but he went with the with the green pepper he he started dogging me on instagram <laughs> along with a couple of his minions that he's buddies with about me putting green bell peppers on my cheesesteaks. And they weren't bell peppers. They were banana peppers that my neighbor wanted, not that I ate. So that's how it started. And obviously it's all in good fun. Right. And if anybody watching has, has kind of been on Instagram watching when this, it kind of, we spark it up. Like I'd say once every couple weeks, we get into it, on you know, and we we go back and forth, and it's like meme central, man. We pull out all these <laughs> memes, and I mean, I, listen, I wouldn't be surprised if if tonight Chris posts a meme of like Bernie sitting in his chair with his winter gloves, holding a cheesesteak with green peppers, right? Oh, like, man. like that's. I that's woke up and that was that meme was everywhere. No, Bernie's was everywhere, everywhere right now. But that's how slick Chris is. He would take that meme and and, and Photoshop a cheesesteak in Bernie's hands. As he should. Right. Chris, I'm look, dude. I, I want to see it, Chris. Dude, Before he's so the show's fun. over. So we have fun with it, man. It's been fun. Like, no, I don't eat green peppers on my cheesesteaks. But you know but, what? You know what? Shitty dude is. But I'm but I'm a good sport, and I kind of admitted that I did. And we kind of play along with it, and you know, people have fun with it. It's all entertainment, man. When it comes down to it. But I gotta tell you, man, I, I've put green peppers and onions in my Philly steak, so it's just a onions cheese steak. Onions is okay, salad, but man. no peppers. No, no peppers. Yeah. Peppers don't belong on a Philly cheese steak. Well, there you go. Now I know. See, you teach them the so SoCal boy something. Yeah, yep. yep. <laughs> That's funny shit right there. All right, Rusty Lambs in there. What's up, man? Darnell Medley, how you guys doing? Can't go for the next question, but. All right. <clears throat> Since Dad is in here and little bro Mark is in here, let's hear about that dolphin on the crack. All right. So there's no dolphin on my crack. That was pretty funny though. Uh, my first. So my first tattoo. Um, I have you know my I have portraits of my boys here, which are fairly recent. My nephew up on my shoulder. He passed away when he was 15. So um, I have a memorial to him. My whole arm here is done. And when I was, I guess, 18, as I was like a senior in high school, just graduated or something, um, man, we're talking now, guys, listen, to my defense, we're talking mid 90s, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, have, I have a full, you know, done. tribal Thank tattoo. You. Thank you, CJ. <laughs> Thank you. You are my Justin Timberlake, CJ. I see it, baby. So obviously, I had to have a tribal tattoo. Stop it! Right. I had to get a tribal tattoo. It was yes. the mid '90s, CJ. Of course, it was the mid '90s. I had to have a tribal tattoo, and it had to be a band, right? And oh, I, nice. I needed a tribal band around my my huge high school eighteen year old bicep. Look right? at that bad boy right there. And my biceps when I was eighteen were probably like this. Right? <laughs> so. So I had I had a tribal tattoo um, 
just tribal design wrapped around my my arm as and you I, should as that... i got older yeah i loved it it was great like but as i got older it became more and more terrible uh mm-hmm. yeah and i ended up covering it uh with the tattoo that i have now you could still kind of you can still kind of oh, get, yeah, I get a little bit yeah little visions of it here and there but um, I, I never even tried to cover it up. I just made it bigger. Well, that's huge, yeah. But that's what you did. You, you <laughs> added to it, right? It started out with like you know two by three little squiggly, you know, whatever. See, but that's not that's a tribal tattoo. There's nothing against tribal tattoos. Oh no, no. I think what my brother's busting chops about is that it was a, a tribal band. Well, at least it like, wasn't a barbed wire band it was close to it it was close it wasn't barbed wire but it was it was in the vision of barbed wire (laughs) well listen matt i I always say i don't i don't regret any of my tattoos but if i could go back to my 20 year old 25 year old self and be like yeah don't get the half yeah yeah you'll you'll thank me later uh (laughs) i I tell my high school kids that all the time because i have high school kids that are tatted up more than i am Oh man. And I'll have some that'll ask me like they're going to get there first. And I'm like, man, just really, really think about it. Like there's going to come a time where you're probably going to want to get it lasered off or cover it. Like, just be careful. Um, yeah. you know what you're getting. So our, our daughter's 14 and she's already planning out her first one. I'm like, can you yeah. get, just get to 18? Please? I mean, look, the dolphins, I don't care about because the only person <laughs> that sees them are my wife. <laughs> uh, excuse me. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Go ahead. Next question. Kim's just dying up there, man. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, if if the only reason I'm getting through this show right now is because <laughs> Uncle Steve and Hobo in the chat. Oh yes. I'm I'm about ready just to say the hell with it. I quit and I'm just gonna go in the chat. <laughs> you got work. Some food food you got work food food get in there. There's a lot of good stuff happening in the chat. Let me tell you. Uh, Matt, if I were you tomorrow, I'd run through the chat. There is some good stuff flying by. <laughs> well, I know you uh, got some comedians in there. I know that. Yeah, well, you, you, you definitely invited some, uh, some comedians. You have a few, you know, but we have a few that we know, too, that are um, – just trust me. You're going to find out when some questions come up. I love it. I love That's it. That's awesome. Hey, Johnny Mags is in the chat. What's up, baby? With your last name, Rourke, one of the questions from Russell, Raspberry Rock. How many times have you had to spell your last name? Like every, every time. Every time, yeah. Very, that's a, that's a good question, man. My dad's going to appreciate that question. <laughs> and my brother. Like that, that's every time. Like it's gotten to a point, it's gotten to a point, Dutch, where I, I lead with spelling it. Like wow. I'll, I'll say Matt and then G R O A R K. Like I'll just spell it. I won't even say it. Um, you know, a lot of people turn it into a two syllable name. It's Grork. <laughs> it's Grork. Grow arc. People say Grow Arc. Grow Arc. You know? Yeah. Um, so, but Grork. I, I mean, it sounds like if you had like a bullfrog or a toad on the floor and you step on it, it's probably going to say my last name. <laughs> like drawer, you know, well, just run it together. That's that's another thing Russell asked. Do you ever say G roar? G okay. roar. <laughs> so I get I got growing up, I got a lot of um Grorky. Um, you know, Grork is what most of my students call me. They've gotten good at saying it. I taught elementary school for for a handful of years, and little ones couldn't say my name, so it was just Mr. G. Um, you know, and when I started the business, when I started the business, that was a big question. Like, do I want to name it Grork Boys Barbecue? Like, do I want my name in my brand because it's so hard to say? Um, you know, and I got some really good advice from people that you're you are your brand. You know, you, your brand is you. So. It's unique, it's individual, and my name is something that you just don't hear. Um, so I went with it, man, and I've, you know, it's a it's a legacy in terms of my two boys, uh, Adric and Nash, and it's something that I hope over time they can grow to to take over or not. 
like what I mean, whatever, it, however it kind of goes, Grork Boys Barbecue is going to be something that people know. Right. Hey, Dutch, before you ask your first, your ne- I'm sorry, your next question, I got to do this. Hold on real quick, guys. From our boy. Waiting for Gork to stop putting peppers on his cheese steak. Ruby Q. <laughs> just, just send it to me. That is phenomenal. He couldn't could even wait. You. He, he, I, he did what we asked him to do. He, he's a wizard. He's a wizard. Like, that <laughs> is awesome. That's freaking hilarious, man. That's awesome. That's freaking hilarious. Oh, Q, that's freaking hilarious, bro. Best. <laughs> <laughs> Big Rome, what's up, baby? <laughs> All right. Oh, okay, go oh, yeah, All right. that, that was with the name. That was that's a big thing, man. It's you know I know that at the end of the day I wanted to build something bigger than you know just me and you know my I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't be anything if it wasn't for my pops and uh, you know to do something that makes him proud and you know I've had to lean on him so much during my life and you know my younger brother and older brother will say the same thing. And, uh, you know, if there's anything I can do to, to build that legacy and that name and just, you know, put some pride into it, like, that's what I'm going to do. And, uh, you know, hopefully I'm, hopefully I'm at the beginning of doing that. I love that, man. It's fabulous, dude. I thought about using my last name, but it's Volkman. And people would say Volkswagen. It would just be a big mess all the time. So <laughs> I, I don't even mess with that. <laughs> can figure out why I didn't use mine. Vandy Weird. Vandy Weird. You know how long it took me to figure out how to spell your last name, Kent? Yeah. How long did it take you to figure out how to spell your last name? (laughs) I think I was a junior in high school. Attaboy. (laughs) All right, go for it, bud. All right. Uh, Keith Bettag wants to know, other than you said you taught driver's ed, you coach basketball, what other subjects do you teach? I'm a health and phys ed teacher. So, right. yeah, I teach I teach health, physical education, um, gym, sex ed? Uh, I'm a gym teacher. And, uh, yeah, I taught driver's ed for a lot of years. Uh, I have taught in the 19 years I've been teaching, I have taught from first grade up to 12th grade seniors. Um, I've taught middle school. I've done it all, uh, K through 12, uh, which very few teachers can say they've done. Um, as a phys ed teacher, you're certified K through 12, so you have that ability. I started at the, at the middle school level, then I went to the elementary level. I knew I wanted to coach um, and be involved in basketball, so I jumped up to the high school when I had that opportunity, and I've been up there for about 14 years now. So, um, yeah, health, phys ed. And with health, it it spans everything, right? Fitness, wellness, uh, mental, emotional, social health is huge right now um, and really can't be downplayed at all. I know there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of people that might, you know, sweep phys ed right off the (laughs) off the ledge, you know, and be like schools don't need it. Um, You know, I think more now than ever, people need kids, especially our kids, especially need that that social, emotional learning you know that i i do i do meditation stuff with my kids man just sit back stop talking stop looking at your screen and i go through a whole thing and and they love it they they fight a little bit in the beginning but you know with suicide rates where they are now with young boys and girls like it's just it's terrible man and this isn't helping uh yeah. the situation we're in now so um i lose a student every year it's uh, just it's it's the reality of it. I teach in the largest high school in South Jersey. Um, and that's, that's a sad reality that, uh, every year I lose a student that I personally knew. Um, it's something that a lot of people don't know about me. Um, whether it's by suicide, overdose, cancer, some years it's two or three. Um, I lost one a few months ago to cancer. Um, you know, a kid that graduated a couple of years ago that I've kept in touch with. And I raised some money for his family on TikTok and was able to go drop off a check to them to, you know, just maybe help a little bit. Right. And uh hardest part of my job, man, is is knowing those kids and then having to deal with that. So 
that's a big part of what I do. I say, you know, I'm a phys ed teacher, but, you know, I teach health and phys ed. But at the end of the day, I always tell the kids I teach and any adults, I parents I talk to. Like, I feel like my job is just to teach your kid, like not necessarily health and phys ed, but a couple main things like just teach them how to be kind, how to be good kids, how not to be assholes. <laughs> just don't be an asshole. Hey, right. that's all I care about for my boys. That's it. I just don't want them to grow up to be assholes. That's it. Don't be a, don't be a dick to people. Be kind. Spread love. Be positive to people. Give people the benefit of the doubt. Like try to do that. It's it's hard sometimes, but give people the benefit of the doubt. Like believe that people have good intentions. You're gonna get screwed sometimes. There's no doubt about it. But it's gonna make you better. It's gonna make you smarter. It's gonna make you more streetwise. And you know you'll, you'll grow from there. So I try to do that. Like I teach the kid, I teach the person, not so much a subject, you know, if yeah. that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. And Elton just put something in the chat, the dog, dog father's barbecue. His wife is a educator and he says, trust me, it takes a special kind of person to be in education. So yeah, he's right. Uh, yeah. smooth, smooth seven just dropped five bucks in the chat. Thank you, brother. Says appreciate you and your friends, CJ. Appreciate it, man. I appreciate it a lot when you guys donate. Never respect it, but I always appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, got a couple more people in there. Diving dumpster diving Indiana. Uh, Jack got meat. Uh, Jack Jack got meat. Said so what's up, Grort? Yeah, I know Jack. That's my guy. Bill. Bill builds woodworking. What's yeah, up? my dude. Listen, Bill. If anybody's on here, go follow my boy Bill. Like, follow that kid. Right on. He's he's 16 years old, 17 years old. And you could scroll through my TikTok, and 80 percent of the videos, the cutting board that I use, mm. he he built for me. That's awesome, man. So. 16. And this just goes to talk to speak of like the type of kids that I get to teach, man. Bill is is a big time wood. You know, his his mom owns a a, a, a uh, I can't even think of what like a she, I mean, she does signs and, you know, wood signs and, and, and all that kind of craft like a. Yeah. A craft I agree and, and she's amazing. He a kid has great parents and uh, he I had him his freshman year. And we, we talked a lot about food and barbecue and just what he does. Um, he's big in the wood shop there uh, with building. And, and I mean, he, this is a kid that teaches other kids, right? Like oh, he's, yeah. he's in class, he's doing his thing, but the teacher uses him as like <laughs> a, a, a right hand, you know? And yeah, really uh, cool, he man. came up to me, he came up to me one day and this is when I was pro I don't know, I was probably like, I, I probably didn't even have 50,000, 20,000 followers on TikTok at this point. Mm -hmm. And Bill was like, hey, Grork, I want to make you a cutting board. And I'm like, what? He was like, I want to make you a cutting board in class. And I'm like, dude, awesome. Let's do it. And sure enough, if you go to my videos, you'll see the big ass cutting board I use. This, at the time, 14 year old kid made it. <laughs> that's, that's freaking He's awesome. He's awesome, man. I love that kid. He's awesome. So uh, one of our uh, illustrious uh, commenters, our moderators in the chat, Hobo, you know, <laughs> he's, he's known for his hashtags. <laughs> so you say anything funny, he'll, he'll roll with it, right? So he goes, you know what, hot, <laughs> what CJ was never taught? Hashtag strong pullout game. I guess that's alluding to the five children in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Bubba K, what's up, everybody doing, man? Sweet Lou Calamity from New Jersey is in the house. Sweet Lou, Matt Grork, another New Jersey. Jersey family. New Jersey, Jersey in. Anyway, so thanks, Obo, for the hashtags. You know, it's it's great entertainment for sure. All right, Kit, you got more questions or is it my turn? Uh, yeah, I do. I do. I, uh, I Some of them I, uh, I have to... Uh, Edit through because <laughs> some people get butthurt if you change one one word. Of the <laughs> uh, Pitmaster Pastor wants to know, Matt, your thoughts on cooking on barrels. It's my boy Jesse. Um, yeah, man, I 
listen, I pretty early on, I I got hooked on cooking on barrels. Um, I was introduced to the barrels. I started with like a Weber kettle, you know, basic. Yeah. It's still what I cook on the most probably. Um, but I got started on barrels with uh, pit barrel. Uh, my my friends Amber and Noah who own pit barrel. Uh, I've I've had a great relationship with them. And I have their barrel smoker and I cooked on that thing religiously, man. It puts out hands down to this day, the best ribs. Yep. Rib that, machine. I mean, it's a rib cooking machine. And Chris Stuby Q will, will attest to that because he got one. And that thing is a rib cooking machine. And uh, Jesse, and we could talk more, you know, down the road about uh, a gentleman named Frank that I'm friends with, you know, smokerbuilder.com. And, uh, I mean, you're talking anything from a backyard barrel, if you want a backyard, ugly drum right. to a thousand gallon, you know, reverse flow smoker. Um, he's your guy. So, um, I recently hooked up with him and Jesse and I have a beautiful, uh, Eagles colored, uh, Jesse's a Vikings fan, by the way, so he might get <laughs> he might get upset. Um, I have a beautiful Eagles colored ugly drum in my backyard, and what's beautiful? Uh, okay, I see. I respect that though, because I can't. I love Aaron Rodgers. First off, I mean, how could you not love Aaron? Rodgers? Aaron Rodgers and Devonte Adams almost took me to the championship in fantasy football this year, um, but I was twelve and one going into the playoffs, so obviously I lost in the first round. Um, so. With with the ugly drum that I have now that Frank makes and that Jesse and I have, um, what's what's unique about it is not only can you do all the pork butt, the brisket, the ribs, and all that stuff, but it has a steak cooker on it. So if you're like a comp guy for steaks and you want those sear, that's that sear on your steak, um, it, it's hooked up. It comes with grill grates. He partnered with grill grates and. Uh, you're able to get the grill grates on it and it has a steak cooker. It thing's a tank. It's amazing. So uh, to answer his question, he knows the answer. I'm a huge, <laughs> huge fan of a barrel cooker. When people ask me what they should get when they first get into smoking, I tell them either a Weber kettle or, or a barrel or a pit barrel, you know, ugly drum. And yeah. some people, some people question me like, why, why would you tell them that? Like, a Weber kettle is the hardest thing in the world to smoke on, um, to control the temperature and, and figure all that stuff out. And, you know, most people expect me to tell them to go get a pellet grill because you just have to push a button and, and go right. to bed and let it go. And I'm like, well, if you it depends what you're what you want to do. Do you want to really learn how to smoke and control fire and, and flavor and that kind of stuff? Or do you just want to smoke meat? And it's nothing against pellet grills. I, I've had one. I'll have another one in the future. Like, I, they have their place. But if yes. you really want to learn the craft and, and then start with something like a Weber kettle, because once you learn how to cook on a Weber kettle, you could cook on anything. Anything. And that's fact. Like, no one will ever argue that with me. One well, of my you know, best friends. That's one of those questions we, you know, we ask a lot of the barbecue channels, whatever, yeah. um, is if you could have one grill, you know, and usually comes down the Weber kettle. Done. My, right? one, of my, one of my best friends and biggest influences in this barbecue game is Kurt Halls from Caribbean. Yeah. And if you're on Instagram, you know, Kurt, um, I've had the chance to go to Florida and hang out for a weekend at his house and cook all weekend. And just, he is like, a brother to me and we've had so many long talks and, and he, his backyard was loaded with every grill you could imagine. And he always told me, Matt, if I could, if, if you told me I had to get rid of everything except for one grill, the Weber kettle would be sitting in my backyard. That's it. Does everything. You know, it's funny you bring up uh, Kurt. I'm, I'm part of team tribute you, man. I've, I've the one that straightened out his YouTube channel. Let's go. And we've we've had him on the show. Um, I've done a couple of videos for him. You know, it's, Kurt's it's like my brother, he, man. Kurt's he's like my such brother. a good dude. I love. Um, him. I just actually texted him. Uh, 
Yeah, I get you, Ken. Um, I, t- I text him right now. I tell him you're gone. Uh, Hurts the man. Uh, he's talked. About, he's talking about flying out here in SoCal, so we could do some filming throughout the weekend. Uh, that'd be awesome. And, uh, you know, we'll probably go out to Florida too. I, I want to go. Look, uh, we had CJ. We had so this is like two years ago. Um, it was me, uh, Anthony, whose uh, IG is Pellet Passion, and Ross. Um, I forget Ross's uh, IG, but um, the three of us flew in and and Kurt welcomed us with open arms and man he had we each had our own Weber kettle right right he had a he had a gift bag for each of us with with all the utensils and things that we would need to grill for that weekend and man we just went at it like the whole weekend just cooking making recipes tasting rubs he was in he was in the middle like and and you you know this like he didn't even have the chicken rub dropped at that point. Wow! Like he, I was we were we were three of the first people to taste his chicken rub. It didn't even have a label. Like he put it in our hand and and we got to taste it. It was like crazy. So you know, Kurt's the kind of guy, man. He owns a business. He's wildly successful. Um, he's like a brother, best friend to me, and. I wouldn't be doing this if he, without his support and his guidance over the years, you know, and, and to have somebody like him has been a huge influence to me, man. He, he'll tell me like, listen, Matt, I'm not going to, you know, repost your rub love stuff because you're a competitor now. But at the same time, if I have any questions about anything, he's there for me, man. And that, that says something. That's that's awesome, man. He, he, I was texting him right now. He's texting back. I know he's lurking in the background. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll invite him to the after show for sure. Yeah, we got, yeah. We have some chats. Uh, Dutch, you got you got more questions. Go for it, Bob. Yeah, I do. And uh, Matt, since you were showing your shirt, uh, Cook at Erica once uh, was asking what is on your shirt. So talk a little bit more about your shirt. Yeah, so you know, Instagram, TikTok, this whole social social media thing, really, um, you know, and Erica and T can all speak to this, and Jesse, um, Chris, just brings incredible opportunities, man, and you meet amazing people. Uh, you know, over the last year, I've gotten to connect with uh, with Carlos, and Carlos was in here um, a little bit earlier. I'm not sure if he still is. If he is, drop a comment in here, Carlos. Um, his, his IG, I mean, his, yeah, his IG and TikTok is smoke and vine. Um, and, and Carlos and a partner of his Travis, um, had this vision for this seasoning and rub company. And, uh, we had gotten to talking, you know, pretty early on in this whole TikTok game. And, um, it just came up, man, like how could we really, flip things around a little bit and maybe create something awesome. And yeah, I mean, that's just how it happens. Conversations start, you, you start talking about possibilities and before you know it, you're sending out merch and you have an awesome name and you're, you know, even more importantly, putting out some rubs that are just delicious and uh, you know, something that we can really market too. So I think that's the goal with rub love is not just to, not just to be, a rub you know but to be a brand uh um, yeah. you know something like you look at you look at a brand like yeti right like yeti sells coolers but people just rock yeti gear right people drink out of yeti yeti mugs yeah. like that's that's what people do so you know that yeti mug you have might have a rub love on it one day you know, wow. and, you know, that's that's kind of how we're thinking it. That's our vision, you know, um, love your meat, rub your meat. It's, <laughs> a, it's a very it's a very cool innuendo and people love it and it, and it sells. But, uh, you know, if it doesn't taste good, it's not going to sell. And fortunately, ours does. And uh, it, it has a lot to do with Carlos and Travis and and myself all getting together and, and really making this thing work. And it's been a great few months since we've been together and uh you know sky's the limit man that's awesome man. uh russell put a question from me in there if i could choose any other co-host i wouldn't 
<laughs> I, won't do, I won't do this without Kent. So be nice in the chat. <laughs> Kent, Kent's my guy. I wouldn't do this without him, and he wouldn't do it without me. So there it is. I don't know. I might I might call Matt next time I need a co-host, though, because this guy's this guy's having some good time, and he knows good music. <laughs> Here's it. Good music. <laughs> Uh, it's here. Chilling and Grilling with Coleman says uh, puts four ninety nine in there. How much rub love can I get for four ninety nine? Well, thank you for the super chat <laughs> and quit getting shit for four ninety nine. I have standards. <laughs> All right, I know, I know, I know. It was a joke, bro. Right? <laughs> Just fucking with you too, Russell. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, so yeah, you ain't getting nothing for four ninety nine. The same Vegas, you ain't getting fucking steak and eggs in there. Right? I'll yeah. give you my discount code. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, Kent, go for it. All right. Speaking of Russell, um, he wants to know if you ever had, and now I have to say this exactly the way it was written, or I'm going to get yelled at. Have you ever had a student throw a punch at you? And the second question is what you do. So I don't know. What did you do? What did you do if you do? If a student were to throw a punch at me, I've never had a student throw a punch at me. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Right. For not them. Intention, not intentionally. Um, I've, I broke up, and this says a lot, like 19 years in education, 14 of those years at a high school. Right. Um, I have never, I just last year broke up my first fight. Wow. And that, and that's in 14 years of walking the halls of a high school. Um, that's that that's pretty good. Um, that's so, awesome. And yeah. the fight that I broke up was, you know, kind of expected. So uh, I was able to run out, me and another guy, and kind of grip the kids up. And wait, it wasn't it wasn't two high school girls, was it? No, no. Oh, okay, I'd, okay. I'd be going, All I'd right, be going yeah. in the other direction. Good girls are hard to break up, man. They get hair and stuff. Oh, yeah, they're just you don't, yeah. you don't want to get involved in that. Let them tire each other out. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Mario just put a 250 in there. Another 250 in the chat. Thanks a lot, Mario. Appreciate it, buddy. I wish I had more fun stories about, about fights in high school, but no. <laughs> Hobo said in the chat that's why he always started his fights with the English teacher. Yeah, <laughs> I like to think that that's part of it. Like the kids see me, they're like, "Well, why would we start a fight around Grork, or why would we start a fight around?" You know, I work with other phys ed teachers that are right. pretty put together. Not that I'm like a big dude, but I'm six foot two twenty. Like, I handle myself, and you know, a couple of the other guys I work with say the same. So, I oh. think uh, I think kids would be kind of silly to start a fight around us. That's awesome. Plus, we might let them roll for five minutes and just well, go you, for you it. Gotta let them, you got to let them get a little bit of the aggression. <laughs> I mean, I am 43. I ain't trying to break up some <laughs> adrenaline-filled kid that's throwing punches. <laughs> Pull out my shoulder or something. All right, kid. Go ahead, bro. All right. Russell wants to – or, sorry, Hobo, not Russell, wants to know your thoughts on Doug Peterson. Ah, this is a good question. I've been getting a lot of these. Um, I've been getting a lot of them. Like every time I've posted in the last like four days, um, week, I've gotten like, oh, what are, you, what are your feelings on Doug, Doug, Doug? And my answer is and always will be, I love Doug Peterson. I will always love Doug Peterson. I will always be thankful that he was our coach. He is top three all time, probably top two all-time Philadelphia Eagles coaches. Like, well, who's one? Andy Reid? It has to be Andy Reid. Andy Reid or, I mean, yeah, it's got to be Andy. I would say Andy and then Doug. But the argument is how much, how much does a, does a championship weigh into that, right? Yeah. Um, you know, so there's, there's coaches from back in the 40s that won championships, not the Super Bowl, but championships that you could put ahead of of Andy and Doug if you use that as your barometer. But as far as, you know, in my eyes, in my generation, it's got to be Andy and Doug one and two. 
Dogfather yeah. put Dick Vermeil in there. Uh, that's, that's, I, gotta I, be, well, there's your too. top three right there. And you yeah, could, Dick depending Dick on Vermeule. your generation, like my dad might put Dick Vermeil at one. You know. Well, I mean, most of our generation is more familiar with the Rams. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, that's that's part of it. Like it's generational. So, like on yeah. Sports Talk this morning here in Philly, that's what they were talking about. And Angelo Gataldi, who's like a national, you know, personality here in Philadelphia, he his top two, he was basing it solely on championships one. And I didn't even know the names. His top two, I didn't even know. It was like Greasy Neal. I've never heard of that. Greasy Neal. I don't know if there's anyone in the chat that's old enough. Like You know what? I have I had have heard of that name, but it was at a strip club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's up, Jules? Not that that was a transition from a strip club, but hi, Jules. <laughs> so Greasy Neal won like two or three championships back in the forties or something. Um, you know, so it's yeah, it's but listen, I will always love Doug. We this city owes so much love to Doug Peterson. He will always have a home in Philly. I a hundred percent believe that. And I think that ultimately with as hard as this year was, and there's a lot of reasons that it was this way, I don't think that Doug is leaving Philly um, with any real hate in the fans' eyes. I think that if anything, the fan base, the real fan base here, not the, not the rumors and the, the shit that you hear from the national media, the Santa snowball throwers and shit like that, like <laughs> – that's not Philly. That was one of my questions. <laughs> That's not Philly, man. It's just not. Yeah. And I've been going to Eagles games for over a decade now. Um, that's just not Philly. That's not the way we are. Um, there's fans like that in every city. And I've been to 10 other, you know, stadiums that I could, I could list off. They're the same. But they don't get the national media attention that Philly does. Um, but – it's I think most fans in this city probably think Doug was done wrong and think Howie was probably the one that should have gone um, over Doug or both of them should have gone. I think Doug was used as a scapegoat to an extent. Uh, the fact that they fired him a week after they should have, they probably should have fired him a week earlier. Um, you know, but it's yeah, I love Doug, man. So you'll never you'll never hear. Never hear a negative word about Doug Peterson because he brought us the one and only thing that, you know, I was able to share with my pops. My pops is 75, never saw a Super Bowl, man. Like, yeah. like to be able to be in our house watching the, the game and me and my dad and my younger brother and, my, and all of us be together. And we went to the NFC Championship game. I, we went to the divisional game and then to watch the Super Bowl together. Like, you want to talk about some grown men just hugging and crying? Like, uh -huh. That's, that's what it was, man. We were hugging and crying at the end of that game. It was crazy. That's awesome, man. All right, dude. Uh, can, how many we got? Oh, I got. I can go on for a while. <laughs> let's let's uh, take a little break. Let's do the giveaway. Let me let me ask you a few of my questions. Uh, we're uh, like I said, Matt. This time flies when you have fun. We're an hour in. Yeah, I'm so. good. Man. Yeah, so are you still good to go? You still cool? You got yeah, enough beer to keep you going? If anything, I could run up and grab another. Well, if you need to take a break, you need to go get some more beer. Go for it right now. We'll do a little intermission. Done. Go ahead. Intermission. I'll go be back in a minute. It. I don't I don't know. We don't have pee, ba pee break music like Reicher does. No, no. But we do have the hobo hashtags that take about five minutes to read. All right, read that one real quick. <laughs> Porn title of all time, Men Hugging and Crying. Wow. That, that's all right. All right. Um, guys, if uh, you, uh, you want to come in in the after show hangout, uh, message me on Facebook. I'll send, you, uh, I'll send you the link to jump in there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Jules, uh, how you doing? Appreciate you being here. That was a real conversation stopper. <laughs> nice. Um, so uh, next week's guest, Steve <laughs> Jacqueline, well, probably just Steven, Steven, but, uh, really excited to finally have our moderators, 
with the most, not the host with the most, the moderators with the most going to be on the show. So very excited about Steven and Jacqueline. And uh, uh, my wife is texting me. She must see that it's a, a break. We're on a break. I love it that my wife chimes in the chat just to say hi to you. I know. It's, it's well, you know, if you're a little nicer, she might say hi to you. I'm just. If I was nicer to her? Yeah. All you do is make a mess of her damn kitchen island and then claim it's your own. Hey, that's my kitchen. Cheers, hey, buddy. I've I've been to your house. I know who does the work in the kitchen. Don't don't yeah, you do the work in the kitchen, Fricker. <laughs> <laughs> this guy flew all the way out to uh Southern California for uh uh from Iowa and came Thursday, Thursday night, Thursday and yeah. From Thursday to Sunday, I wasn't allowed to work in my kitchen at all. Like, yeah, no, that's, bullshit. Day, that's bullshit. <laughs> okay. The the poutine with or hobo says it, the oh, yeah. poutine with the short ribs and come on now. All right. All right. You let me in my kitchen for a little bit. <laughs> well, you were too all busy right. being the gracious host. Yeah, that's when everybody in freaking Southern California showed up to see the great and powerful Kent. Yep. Uh, it was fun. Good times. It was a good time. Uh, let's see here. We're just missing a couple people. We should have had Uncle Steve doing belly flops off your wall. Uh, Uncle Steve needs to come out here. I mean, I can't wait to see Uncle Steve. And uh, we're going to be in Houston at the end of February. So that's going to be exciting. Uh -huh. Texas boys, uh, we're uh, Kit and I are going to be in Houston February 24th through the 28th. All right, so, I might need to bring my shit kickers along, dude. I got I got the cowboy hat. I'm thinking about bringing this bad boy. Yeah, I'll just go with the ball cap in Texas, but boots, dude. What do you think? Yeah, that fits you, CJ. That looks good on you, right? Yeah. I could, if I could get away with this vibe in California, you can rock that. Uh, there's no, there's no more uh, you really, practice to go to in, in Southern California. You look like a, how should I say this politely? Fat ass Garth Brooks in that. <laughs> no, hey, Garth Brooks is fat. If you saw him on the our, our inauguration yesterday, Garth, Garth Brooks. Brooks hey, hey, Garth Brooks is pleasingly plump, son. Dude, that boy is dude. When his wife has a freaking uh, <laughs> cooking uh, food network channel uh, show, you gotta be uh, <laughs> you gotta be fat. Uh, all right, all right, guys. So, uh, while before we get into the next kind of set of questions, uh, we're gonna do the giveaway we should have done forty five minutes ago. But I'm looking at Kent. You better not answer this. Put your phone down. Step I never hear my phone. It's always on the iPad, you dim way. What? Step away. My iPad. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So we were talking about Matt earlier. Tell us one thing he just absolutely has to have on his Philly cheesesteaks. <laughs> Put it in the chat. What Matt Grork is known for on his Philly cheesesteaks, throw it in the chat. It's not, a, and no, it's not a dolphin looking at his crack. It's not a dolphin <laughs> on the crack. <laughs> Let's hey, see, Tyler put in there peppers. Tyler's the first homeboy. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Tyler. Uh, you're wrong. Shit, there's a whole bunch more in there. Oh, shit. Let me look. Yeah, Tyler, peppers. Tyler, Mario said peppers. All right, Mario, message me your uh, address, and we will get it. Uh, get Uncle Steve to send you some shakes. Tyler, send me your address, too, because I'm sure Uncle Steve will send you some, too. Sorry for the the mix-up. All right. Good. Thank you, Uncle Steve, for being willing to sponsor such a great show. Are you flipping something over there? Are you giving me no, that? No, there's, there's one thing I want to mention uh, before we go any farther. Um, Mr. Homeowner Rob is doing another uh, epic live stream on the, what, 20... When is it, Keith? Is it the end of this month, I believe, on that Saturday, the 20th? 
I don't remember the exact date. Anyway, um, he's doing another 12 hour live stream to raise money uh, for Josh and Babe. And if we hit that uh, certain figure that Keith and Rob came up with, uh, Keith is going to shave his beard live. Nice. So, and if you know Keith Bettag, he could be a stunt double for Uncle Cy on Duck Dynasty. That's yep. all. Right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Pitmaster Pastor. Uh, you didn't say it first, buddy. I, I, I have proof. I always take a picture of the chat because <laughs> people give me shit every time I do a giveaway. He's so, got plenty of rub. He doesn't. He's got plenty of rub love from Matt. <laughs> And, and that might be the seasoning or whatever. You take it however you want, but, you know. <laughs> I gotta Let's see. Uh, Blevin, what's up? West Coast Cajun Cuisine. How you doing, brother? Good to see hey, you listen, in there. Maybe people to hang on here for a little bit and keep the party going. Maybe I'll do a Rub Love giveaway. All right. That's that up boy right there. Yeah. Um. See, uh, sorry. Mario, you can email me or you can message me on Facebook, however you get there. Uh, my email is in my about section. You can find it there. And then – uh. I know you're just messing, man. I can't imagine you're pissy about this. Uh, Pitmaster Pastor said he's just messing. It. Yeah, nah, dude. he's just it's, nah, he's uh, it's like it's like when I play poker in Vegas and I play the one three table and people give me shit about calling with like nine eight offsuit or whatever. I'm like, <laughs> if you're playing with rent money right now, go away. Just fucking go yeah. away. I'm <laughs> here to so get hard. drunk, have fun, and watch football. Leave me alone. So, <laughs> uh, so um, before we get back to Matt. You're just talking about Josh and Babe, um, Matt. One of our community members, a good friend of mine here in Southern California, Josh. He's a police officer uh, for uh, uh, the Los Angeles Sheriff's. Found out he has cancer. He's going through round five. He jumped in there a little earlier. Uh, he's going through round five of chemo. Um, I, I know we've done some fundraising for him. Uh, Mr. Homer is going to do the fundraising for him too. Um, yeah. I wanted to give you guys an update. Um, I know we've talked that my wife, her company has a foundation. Uh, they've actually got a hold of Josh and Bethany, and they've uh, reached out to my wife too. Um, if her company uh, sets it up, deems them worthy, whatever they, however they decide what they're going to do, uh, they will be set, and they will not have to worry about fundraisers or money for a long time. So. I'm really hoping that comes through. Um, you know, uh, Josh is a great friend. Bethany's a great friend. So, um, I, I'm, I'm everybody. If you guys, you know, will you pray or put out good vibes or whatever. You know, that's this is the time to do it. Hopefully, uh, she works for a very big company and uh, they have plenty of money to to help out others with their foundation. So, hopefully, they're they're part of the winning team on that one. So, uh, we got Chris from Eastwood Farms in the chat. Welcome, welcome. All right, uh, Hobo, I'm not going to plug your merch until you send me some merch. So when you want to talk about woodenbuttplugs.com, if I don't have a shirt for woodenbuttplugs.com, I'm not mentioning it on my channel. I would just send him the wooden butt plug. Yeah, I mean, it's, well, I, need, I could use a wooden butt plug too, but I mean, I, I heard some triple X t-shirts were coming our way. So if you want to be a hot seat sponsor... <laughs> Listen, I'm money hungry. I'll, I'll let anybody sponsor the show, Matt. It's just one of those things. <laughs> Sex toys, mortgage companies, whatever. It don't matter. <laughs> All right. Um, let's kind of – I'm, I'm going to take over with the, que <laughs> the questions. Uh, if you guys have more for Matt and Dutch, uh, put in the chat at Daddy Dutch Barbecue so we can see your question. Uh, I have a feeling this one's going to be a, a long a long, uh, long hit. A long night, so let's get those questions going. <laughs> We got plenty of beers. I got I got whiskey in mine. Kent's got whiskey in his. Actually, I got vodka tonight. What the? F uh, like I don't even know you anymore. I had to shy away from the dark liquors for a little bit. I understand. I understand. All right. Uh, let's see here. Um, this is <laughs> one thing about you that just it makes me laugh so hard when I when you talk about it or whatever. Um. Your wife is a vegetarian. Yes. You own a barbecue catering company, your barbecue Absolutely. channel, barbecue. Talk about how that all works out. 
so yeah it's uh yeah people sometimes i think early on people thought i was like it was just a shtick like i was right, lying right. and trying to drum up some kind of like story to try to gain followers or something or some kind of interest but For I think as, as it continued like you could see through my content that you know <laughs> my wife's never in my videos um or anything like that so um yeah, so I mean, I've, we've been married for uh, God, seven years now, and uh, you know, together for more than ten. And uh, we went to middle school, high school together. Um, wow. You know, yeah, we we've known each other for a long time. Uh, kind of rolled in different circles, you know, when we were in high school. Didn't really talk much. I was, uh, you know, I was kind of locked up, whipped in high school uh you could say is probably one of uh, i don't know it's it's not that i not that i regret anything but i just i see high school kids now and i'm like man just be single man just (laughs) smart and you know but anyway long story short we uh yeah we linked up man the lord had had a plan for us so we uh we ended up back together and uh, she actually graduated from Rutgers, New Brunswick, uh, North Jersey. And uh, she was a photography major. Uh, I didn't know her at the time, you know, she had graduated high school and went away to college. And uh, you know, I stayed local for a couple years before I went and got to play some division three basketball, Uh, you know, in PA, not too far from here. And uh, she got her degree and she moved to New York City or got a job in New York City with Self Magazine, big time, you know, like editor type job. And uh, yeah, she was like living the dream, man. She was living on the North Jersey side of the river and she would take the train into into New York City every day. And she was working right in Manhattan, Um, you know, and obviously this is all stuff I learned after we got back together. It got together. Right, right. Um, you know, I didn't know what she was doing at the time, um, but I was kind of living local, getting through college and waiting tables. I've worked in a restaurant industry my whole life, just waiting tables and stuff, which kind of rolls into what I do now, you know, for the most part, because yeah. it's always been an interest of mine. Um, yeah, and 9-11 happened um, and she saw the whole thing from her apartment window. Uh, on the Jersey side of the river. So she actually, the, the first plane woke her up. Um, she didn't see it, but it hit at what? Nine, nine, it was like eight thirty eight or something like that or something. So the first plane struck and that woke her up and, uh, her roommate, she had a roommate, her roommate was already on her way to the city. Um, cause she worked in the city as well. And, uh, Kristen woke up Mm -hmm. to that first plane. And as a photographer, like that's what she did. Her instinct, this is all stuff she's told me. Um, and she doesn't share a whole lot about it because it's, you know, obviously something super tough to to talk about. And, uh, you know, she, uh, she woke up that morning and the first thing she could think to do, it was all so surreal. Um, like it just wasn't really happening. And the only thing she could think to do was to sit on her windowsill and grab her camera. Yeah. And, and that's what she did. She kind of hid behind that lens um, and just snapping, snapping photos. So we have a shoe box here in our house. And I honestly, since we I haven't seen it in, in years, I, I won't I haven't even looked at it. It's probably been three years since I've opened it or since she's wow. taken it out. But it's it's time stamped um, starting at like 840 and it's just smoke. And as you as you thumb through the pictures, it, you just see you see the building then you see the second plane hit. Then you see the entire just entire New York City covered in smoke and the bridge is right there. And you see people right on the horizon out of their cars like traffic just stopped and they're sitting on their roof watching. Right. Um, and she has pictures of all of it until, you know, the last roll of pictures. It's just. It's just 
the entire landscape was changed. The smoke cleared and she has photos of it. So um, that brought her home, you know, as crazy as yeah. it is, as crazy as it is to say um, that 9-11 never happened. And, you know, our hearts go out to, to the people that were lost in the lives and the first responders. And, you know, it's I uh, feel like the world will never be the same, has never been the same since that happened. But um, if that hadn't happened, I wouldn't be sitting here, you know, with my with my life, with my family, with my kids, um, because she would have still she would have stayed in New York. Um, she would have never come home. So after it happened, she she volunteered on site. Uh, they had trailers all set up with just stocked with donations and water and food and snacks for the first right. responders that were there searching. And she was there, you know, handing water out to the firefighters and, and police that were searching. And she said at the same time, she was, you know, even more so she was a shoulder to cry on. Like these guys would come into the trailer to get some water and they would just they would break down and start crying. Like and she would she couldn't do anything for them but sit there and hug them, you know, and that's because they were just so it wasn't real, like is the best way she described it. So she, she volunteered on site for, for a month or two, I think mm -hmm. it was. And then she came back home. She moved back down to South Jersey, moved in with her mom, went back to Rowan university and changed her mate, changed her career. She went, she went into education to be a teacher. And here we are. You know, she's a principal now. Um, she came strolling into the restaurant I was working at. I was a server um, in my late 20s, early 30s. And uh, she came strolling in with her boyfriend on, uh, <laughs> on New Year's Eve for dinner at an Italian restaurant that I worked at. <laughs> and uh, I knew who she was. We hadn't seen each other since high school. But uh, when I saw her walk in, I knew who she was. And I walked up to her table with her and her boyfriend and I introduced myself. I said, hello, asked her how she was doing. And uh, I sent them like, you know, I sent them drinks or something like that. And, uh, you know, I kind of knew what I was doing. Nice. <laughs> uh, trying to swoop in there. Yeah, Man, I, I, I kind of knew what I was doing. And uh, I was single at the time and I had been through a divorce prior to that. Um, kind of like a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, kind of marriage <laughs> lasted 17 months. And then we got divorced, no kids, no, you know, it was kind of like a high school breakup. And, uh, you know, so I was single at the time and yeah, I kind of caught her attention and then she started stalking me on Facebook and, uh, we connected and <laughs> she'll, you know it's real. She'll, she'll tell you I was stalking her, which is probably right. But, um, we went out on a date and here we are. Well, it, Matt, it isn't it isn't real if you're not stalking on Facebook. <laughs> Matt, you might want to uh, protect that story because it's probably something my wife is going to see next year on the Hallmark Channel. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna it, gets, it. Yeah, it gets crazier, man. It gets uh -huh. crazier. Our well, married life has been crazier, man. It's uh, you know, it is. It's it's crazy. It's hard to it's hard to sit here and say something like you know nine eleven happening is what brought my wife to me, you know, which is what it's crazy. It, it's a weird thing to say. And, uh, you know, but it's things happen for a reason and it's hard to find reasons sometimes, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm blessed, man. And, you know, I couldn't imagine not having her in my life. And, um, we fought hard to have the family we have. Um, so, you know, we have beautiful, two beautiful boys and we've we're 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 each other's rock man that's uh that's just what it is and we're fortunate to have right. found each other again very cool man very cool and you never know what's going to direct you one way or another and you know uh i'm a big believer in god has a plan you know he don't necessarily share what it is and i've probably fucked it up along the way but i know there's been some plan <laughs> for me so you never know where it's going to go and what happens, what takes you there. So, but I know we just kind of went over with your wife and all that, but I do what I feel. And, you know, a lot of the, you know, YouTuber people in the chat probably have to deal is you have to have supportive wife to do what we do. 
because it that's why I didn't long. even answer the question. Like she's vegetarian, right? So yeah, yeah she's, she's vegetarian. Been, so, yeah. She's been a vegetarian since she's twelve. Like she, <laughs> she, it's not like she turned vegetarian because I do nothing but cook meat and it's disgusting to her. Yeah, she funny, she's man. been a vegetarian. She's forty two. She's been a vegetarian for thirty years. You know, it's not like <laughs> we met and she was like, oh my god, like I'm I'm never I'm never eating that. She uh. She, she tells me that it was a Thanksgiving when she was 12 years old and she was standing next to her mom in the kitchen and her mom reached into the bird and oh. ripped out all the all the innards. And from that day on, Kristen never ate meat again. Well, that was it. I could I could see it. I mean, it's, it is pretty just cool. flipped a switch. Hey, but she is ultimately very supportive of 100%. what you do. 100%. How does that work out for you guys? I mean, I, I saw what you did today. You made the fried rice with the tofu and the yeah. steak. You yeah, know, you separated all that. Is that how you guys kind of roll through life with that? Yeah, that's pretty much the that's pretty much the drill. That's how it goes. Um, you know, more times than not, it's not me cooking. Um, yeah. You know, I I did that fried rice recipe. Um, you know, and I was able to make it for her too because it's super simple, right? To, yeah. to take two proteins like that on a griddle that size and keep them separated. That's pretty, pretty easy. But, you know, I always give people the example, you know, when, when life wasn't as crazy as it is now, and we had time to actually be in a kitchen as a family um, mm -hmm. and make dinner and listen to music and just kind of have that time. Um, she would be making two meals every night. That's just what she did. Now she's a phenomenal yeah. cook. Um, her mom's a great cook. She's a great cook. So let's just say we were having meatloaf that night. She would make two of them. She would make a meatloaf for me and for the boys because she's not forcing anything on the kids, right? She yeah. wants them to eat what they want. Um, so she would make a meatloaf out of, you know, ground beef, ground pork, you know, the whole thing. And then she would make a tofu loaf whatever that is. <laughs> uh, i think half the people in the chat just cringed oh, yeah shit. like i did i know oh, like man. we have a turkey at thanksgiving and we have a tofurkey tofurkey That's um awesome. you know we made escarole and beans i made escarole and beans and i eat i use spicy sausage or smoked sausage in ours and she doesn't she just eats the pasta escarole and beans because she still gets her protein from the beans you know right, right. but then i got to deal with that with the beans at night bedtime you know that's uh it's true <laughs> hey if we got if we got any uh tiktokers left in the chat throw film this and put it on there so we can do some uh duets with uh, yeah, right. Matt later, cool. okay <laughs> and 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 find me on tiktok too uh i'm cooking with cj you, you can find it cooking dot with dot cj put it on there i want to duet this later watching matt in the hot seat so <laughs> uh, uh my thing is is you know kind of getting away from you know tofurkey uh <laughs> thank god thank god <laughs> <laughs> well, hey hold on hold on i gotta since Matt just talked about the fried rice. All right, go for it. Wife, does your wife watch your videos? Yeah, yeah, she does. She's not on TikTok, but she's so, but on YouTube, where the part where you said, Yeah, that piece of steak touched. Don't you think you should have edited that out if you <laughs> were really that worried about it? Where the steak nah, uh, she, tofu. Nah, she wouldn't like you saw it. If you saw the video, you saw how like very, very little bit touched it. Like that's not she's not gonna taste <laughs> that. You know? Man, you, you know, it's not like I'm rubbing her, bacon all over. Start eating meat again because you just tainted her diet of thirty plus years. I did tell her Dutch, you'll you'll like this one. So I was cooking on on a griddle. Like this is going a ways back, and I had made a bunch of smash burgers because we had some people over. And, you know, I get done making all the smash burgers and I'm, I got this thing. I got the griddle loaded. Right. Like so this edge to edge burgers and smash burgers take up even more space. And you're pushing all that grease out of them. Right. So, right. You, you know what the griddle looks like. And yep. then I go in and she's like, oh, I forgot. You know, can you throw some of these black bean burgers on for me? Oh, I got you, babe. 
Give me those black bean burgers. You cut like, them right like, in that what am I, bean juice. Dutch, what am I going to do? Am I going to clean the whole griddle? No, or hell no. A couple black bean hell burgers? No. So, Plus, pop, 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 slap you know, the black bean burgers on. I'm like, I hey, have, they were pretty. Those were the best black bean burgers you ever had. Were they? <laughs> yeah. like, they were really hell good. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have done it either. I would, you know, if she was watching, I probably would have put my back to her and act like I was scraping or something. But I would have smacked them babies right down. But listen, I she has she has had plenty of veggie burgers cooked in bacon grease. All right, well, there, you there you go. <laughs> you know, I would. I, I would. Probably, I would probably get her her own griddle. Yeah. Just yeah, so have, that, have Cuisinart send you out a second one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's got. Do you still have your old Blackstone? Yeah, I gave that to my neighbor actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, get her a George Foreman that she can. Yeah. No, no. You get no. her a Ninja Foodie Grill. Whatever, right. whatever. Shut up. This is my. <laughs> so that way, them black bean burgers don't contaminate your griddle. Contaminate. Yeah, no. <laughs> all those veggies. <laughs> all right uh so you know i i asked you this in a live a long time ago on tiktok right and, you know it's probably the only time i've commented on one of your lives but i was very interested because obviously i've spent a lot of time on youtube i've you know been doing it over three years now and um you know i saw how you were growing on tiktok and then I, you know, I looked at your YouTube, but you know, kind of went back and forth. And I asked, did, did, how does your TikTok translate to YouTube? Has it helped you grow? Do you feel like it's been a a, a, a partner in your influence? If that makes sense? Yeah, there's no doubt. It it definitely has. Um, okay. You know, I I mean, and you can you can take all the platforms for that matter, right? I mean, yeah. I think. TikTok is obviously a younger audience overall, right? I know right. everyone, like we were saying, like you were saying in the very beginning of this, right? Like, you know, 12 year old girls dancing and stuff like that's yeah. you say TikTok like two years ago. I people don't realize that I've been on TikTok since December of 2018. Wow. Like, OK, like this. I, I didn't just recently blow up on TikTok. I spent a year and a half on TikTok doing what doing nothing. Like the same videos, the same person and personality, but I wasn't posting viral videos. Like right. I was just doing what we all do. And so at the end of the day, when people ask me about having success on it, my answer is always the same. Like believe in what you're doing have a passion for it, enjoy it, have fun and be consistent. Like post, post, post. It's that's two years. Like to get to where I am now, it's been two years of two to three posts a day. Yeah. You know, I think I posted um, in 2020, you were able to see on TikTok how many, like a, a, a year in review. And I posted... 998 videos on TikTok in 2020. Holy crap, man. So that's almost three videos a day. Yeah. For 365 days. <laughs> flipping insane, bro. Like post one video a day for 365 days. Most people can't do that. So I can't do that. You know, now granted, some days I posted none. Some days I posted six. Yeah. You know, like. It all balances out, but the the carryover has been huge. Um, you know, I have one point. They're not equal, obviously. Yeah. Um, I have one point six million on on TikTok, and that's always been that's been my biggest platform, obviously. Um, but Instagram, I'm up around. I think I'm pushing sixty now okay. on Instagram, which for me is crazy. Um, oh, that's huge. I was, I was at 10,000 like three months ago. So well, it's definitely translating. It's translated big time to Instagram. Um, All right. And, and YouTube, I was at, I want to say about six months ago is when I really started on YouTube, like 
taken like really committing to it right um more long form videos and then they came out with shorts and the shorts started blowing up um you know and i i went from 90 subs on youtube i think i'm at like 35k now um which in a period you know like in a period of to to grow that big on youtube's a whole different monster to grow that big to grow that fast in such a short period of time on youtube is unheard of and and i'm like i have guys chef kuso max the meat guy uh that dude can cook all nick di giovanni all guys that I'm friends with that I talk to on a daily basis, right. those guys are like over, they went from relatively nothing on YouTube to over 200,000 followers, subs. Dude, I watched Kuso on freaking Access Hollywood or some shit. Like, yeah, he was on fun. the other day. He was talking yeah. to Mario Lopez. Yeah, he was talking to Mario Lopez. Yeah. And I was like, I, I told my wife, I'm like, dude, I follow that guy. And, and um, I was actually going to bring him up the the bullshit between you guys it's all for fun off stage or is he really an asshole he's an asshole he's an asshole he seems <laughs> like an asshole. No, I'm he's a, he, he he seems like uh he's a bro he can tell no, he's yeah a bro. so so the way you know a lot of people don't know the story with me and jack and uh you know we both kind of started this thing at the same time yeah. um what's crazy is he he always had a big instagram following um I think he's over, I don't know, he's like over, I know he might be pushing 200K on Instagram or he's over 200, but Instagram's right. wonky, right? And you know, you've been on Instagram for a long yeah. time. Like there was a period of time, like five years ago where you could spend 20 bucks or take a course and before you know it, you have a hundred thousand followers, but they're all fake and they're all, oh yeah, and that. yeah. like, like that's, you know, there's people that have 200 plus thousand followers on Instagram right now that we all know, yeah. but 80, 80% of them are fake, you know, like yeah. go ahead and have a live event and invite all your followers and no one shows up. Yeah. You have 12 people in there, right? Because bots can't come to a live event. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, but that's like a, a period of time that Instagram went through that and you know, you have a lot of these guys and, and girls that have huge accounts, but some are some are organic, some aren't. Um, I got in at a time that was like right after all that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like lingering between five and ten thousand for a long, long time. Yeah. And then I found TikTok. And that's when my Instagram blew up because a lot of those TikTok kids younger demographic on TikTok also have Instagram. It's a yeah. little different for YouTube because not as many kids on, not as many people on TikTok have a YouTube. Right. And you're not getting any carryover on Facebook. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? F- Facebook's kind of, it's there. It's Listen, it's Facebook monetization, mo- monetizing on Facebook is better than YouTube. Yeah, but you have right to have like, 10,000 followers. But it's, it's like so, so hard to grow. Yeah, um, it is. So it, it's crazy. But Kuso and I touched base first on TikTok. I didn't even know he was on Instagram. I didn't know who he was. He didn't know who I was. Right. And I guess because we cooked similar videos and steak, we got tagged on each other's videos here and there. And we ended up connecting and we messaged each other. And next thing you know, we're texting each other and people are like, yo, what about this? What about that? Do you like this guy? Do you like that guy? So we get on the phone, me and Kuso. And at this time, this is in the very beginning. And uh, the the two of us are both, I want to say that I was around, I may have been around 200, 300,000 at that point. And he was at like a hundred. So I was bigger than him at that time. And we we got on the phone and we were talking and we were like, yo, let's start a beef. Like pun intended. With right? beef. <laughs> like, let's play off it. Let's come off like we hate each other. Right, right. Like we're enemies and we're just battling. Like I'm this old guy. You're this punk kid who's brash and has an attitude and cocky and all this and that, which he is. And yeah. that's why he's awesome. 
And that's why I love them because I see a little bit of me in them from the confidence standpoint, but he's just a bro. Like he is, he's just chill and he's a smart, smart kid. And that's what I don't think a lot of people know about him. Like a lot of people watch Jack's videos and you're not, you don't realize that you're watching a video of a kid that's like an engineer. Like, you don't, yeah, I would never know. That. I, like, I don't know anything much about him. Yeah, but, like he, he's an engineer, like by day, like that's right, what he does. Right. He went to one of the best tech schools in California. He's a New York kid right. that lives in Cali because of college and the tech school he went to, and he's super smart. Where, where's he at in Cali? That, uh, he's, he's in Southern Cal. Uh, he's in Southern Cal, I think. I can't remember the town. I got it, might pop in my head. So but, I might um, find him on there. But it's part of why he's so successful because he's smart. He knows right. what people want. He knows what sells. And he and I got together and we started that beef and it blew up. Yeah. Like it, it took over TikTok for a couple months. Like it was Cuso and Rourke were like the thing for a yeah. period of time. And yeah. that grew me from like two. I went from like two to three hundred up to like seven, eight. And before I know it, this kid passes me. <laughs> and I'm like, here, get on my back. Like, I started this shit. Come on now. Go yeah. ahead, son. Go carry the torch. And, man, he he's done it, man. He's he's working with the NFL. He's working with, like, he's, it's crazy. Damn, dude. Dude, he's, dude, he's he, he, he announced the Buffalo Bills starting lineup. Stop it. You didn't see that? I didn't see that. Go to the Buffalo Bills Instagram page. All right. Go to the Instagram page of the Buffalo Bills and scroll down to the last game they played. Yeah. They had the Buffalo Bills uh, produce this video of a bunch of like local celebrity Buffalo fans saying the names of each player, starter, and Jack did two of them. He announced, uh, I think he did Stefan Diggs, and he's in his kitchen holding the tomahawk steak. Like, Stephon you know, funny, I, dude, I, follow, I follow the bills on IG. I, I will check it out. You got to check it out. It's awesome. That's pretty, but pretty that's cool. it, man. And that's what it's about. Like, the you know, there's so much competition. People think people want to be better than this person and that person and have more followers. I've said it long before I was ever even on social media. Someone that, you know, some teacher or somebody probably said or coach. You know, collaboration is the new competition. And, right. you know, there's there's always competition. Like, Jack wants to make a better steak than me. I want to make a better steak than him. Like, that's just competition. That's just, we're born that way. Um, you know, I watch Nick DiGiovanni's videos, and he's a buddy of mine now, and he's just killing it. Is he like the pasta bitch guy? Dude, Nick. Yeah. Know, Nick does... Um, Nick does all kinds of stuff, man. He was he was on Master Chef with Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, I'm a, I must be thinking another kid. Yeah, kid Nick. Just, Nick is awesome. Up fucking the Nick TV life, like, making pasta. Nah, Nick is like super clean cut. He does okay. everything. He cooks everything. Um, he's cooking a hundred. Uh, if you'll go to his videos now, he probably posted it today. He did a, a hundred day dry aged uh, ribeye loin, like the whole loin. It's like a three thousand dollar cut of like wagyu it's crazy um, That's funny, but these are dudes that we're talking to on a daily basis like to be able to collaborate with these guys but have like this friendly competition where we can oh, yeah. do videos together and who makes a better burger and the fans love it like it's just fun stuff man and and you know it's it's cool it's definitely changing the landscape of social media but um you know it's yeah I still hear people saying TikTok's irrelevant. Oh, and no, no, no. the people that are saying TikTok's irrelevant have no clue what they're talking about <laughs> because TikTok is surpassing Instagram. And that's like, I, I, no, I believe that too. That's like no question. Instagram's trying, but. Um, well, they're, they're doing the same thing with the reels and all that yeah. shit. And like, just like yeah. YouTube with the shorts. It's funny. I did a shorts, uh, just a fun, fucking around video of a, a one pound smash burger right yeah i put it on tiktok get like 195 views i put it on youtube 
gets in that algorithm, it has 1.1 million views and just fucking viral comments like crazy. But uh, crazy. Anyway, the the comments. It, it, it's a lot of fun, and it takes yeah. it takes patience and. Well, but it's, my next it's my, thing. my question kind of leading to that is. You know, I alluded to earlier, uh, CJ's queue was almost to the monetization, you know, standards of 4,000 watch hours, 1,000 yeah. subscribers, right? Uh, but is there something like that? With t- you don't have to divulge, you know, if you, what you make or anything, but is there a mon- monetization on TikTok? Because I saw that as a question, but I already actually had that as a question. I wanted to know myself. Yeah, so TikTok just this past year rolled out what's called the creator program. Mm -hmm. Um, and once you reach, you're able to apply to be part of the creator program. Okay. And it's similar to YouTube in terms of making daily money based on, you're right on YouTube. You can go once you're monetized on YouTube, which I just got like, uh, like last month, I'm making like a dollar a day on YouTube, you know? (laughs) But, but, you know, like two years from now, that could be 500 a day. Like, yes, yeah. it's crazy. Um, you know, it just depends. But TikTok rolled out something called the creator program, which is similar. And you have to have at least a thousand followers and you have to have, um, what was it? A thousand followers. And I think 10, 10,000 likes or something there were two two things that you needed to hit on and once you did you could apply and if you applied you most likely got accepted if you met those two standards of 1,000 followers and or maybe it was 10,000 followers I don't remember 1,000 is to go live um yeah you needed 10,000 followers and x amount of views or something or likes and then whatever their algorithm is or whatever, however they do their math based on your views and your likes and all that, they come up with an amount that you make every day. So the creator program, anyone, any creators that are in the creator program are being paid daily um, for their views. Very like, it's no secret. It's monetization works the same way with YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. It's just a matter of how much they're going right, to pay you right. every day and how big you are. Instagram's going to do it. Like they have to. Yeah. There's, there's no way they can keep competing if they don't do they that. People to. are going to go to where they make money. I'm telling you, CJ, in the next, I wouldn't be surprised if in the next month or two, um, Instagram's going to monetize in the next like two months, I'd say. Yeah. Um, there's no doubt. And I don't know if that means you have to have 10,000 followers on Instagram or 50,000 on Instagram, whatever it is, but they have to, they have to, because everyone else is. So at 1.6 million with the views that I get, I'm making anywhere from, I don't know, $15 to, I think the, the most I've made was like 80 in a day. And that's like, if I posted a couple viral videos, like, yeah. I had a video yesterday that that's at like 1.2 million right now. Um, it's my first viral, my first video over a million in a month. Like that's right, the other right. thing. people think that I just post and the video goes viral. <laughs> like it doesn't work like that. Right. Like, <laughs> I haven't had a viral. I haven't had a, a video that hit a million in over a month. Like TikTok's been wonky, man. Like views are crazy. It's hard. And I, I lost 2,000 followers last week. Any particular reason? You, you know I, anyone? Not, I think it's all just part of the algorithm there. TikTok is constantly changing things and experimenting with stuff. And, you know, I'll go one week and I'll gain 80,000 in a week. And then I'll have a week like last week where I lose 2,000 for some reason. And there's no rhyme or reason. I don't know. It's That's what's crazy about it is people – People think you just post and go viral and it's not, it's not that way. Like yeah. you have as good of a chance of posting oh, yeah. a video and going viral as I do. It's, well, it's just, it's crazy that like you said with YouTube, the algorithm catches it and it's gone. Like it just, it just takes off, you know? It, it's crazy that I, I've seen that. Like 
I haven't had any kind of real viral videos with TikTok, but I did have one that was 10,000 views yeah. within, you know, which, a day or three. Which is fire. Like, how many followers do you have? I don't know, like 300 maybe. All right, so like what's viral? Yeah, I mean, I guess you're that's, right. You think of that that's way. That's what you have to think about. And I was, I was, I never thought of it this way either. But you know, the longer I've been on social media, the more I learn this stuff. Like, viral is is subjective. It, to your, it depends. Like yeah. a video Relative for to your you thing, to right? get to your followers, right? For you to have 300 followers and have a video hit 10k, that's yeah. huge. That's it. That's a massively viral video for you. That's true. And you build off that, right? Like you're going to so, build off it because that 10 K you're going to gain followers off of that. So yeah. with, uh, with, um, when I was doing vi videos, uh, <clears throat> when I first started doing the YouTube or the, the TikTok videos, I would just kind of do filming what I was doing. And then I'd put whatever jacked up music that I could find as I was doing the editing. What I find or what I think I'm learning is you have to have the voiceover with it or at least put yourself in it or something like that. Do you find that to be true? Yeah, definitely. And okay. that's like one of the biggest things that I tell people. Um, two main things like the voiceover thing, everyone just started doing. Yeah. Like that just caught on and everyone started doing it. Um, I won't sit here and say I was like the first person to do a voiceover because I wasn't, obviously, but <laughs> I might have been one of the first to do it on TikTok. Right, right. Like, no one ever did it on Instagram. No, no. Like, Instagram never had voiceovers. No. And on TikTok, I know that I was one of the first. Um, right. And I was doing the voiceovers, and then I was taking those, and I was posting them on Instagram. And... My boy Chuck, Chuck's Flavor Train. Chuck's Flavor Train. Chuck's yeah. the man. And Chuck has that voice, man. Oh, I love that, that voice, dude. He's got that voice, and he knows, and he did the voiceover, and he blew up. He jumped yeah. on He jumped on TikTok, in a matter of two months, he was over a million. Yeah. Because of his voice. Oh, his voice is insane. Like, that's why he hit a million. His voice yeah. is super engaging, and he makes killer food. You put those two things together, game over, done. That's true. So he and I really kind of, I think, were two of the first that really blew up the voiceover thing. And then we were reposting that stuff on, on Instagram. And then you started seeing all these big Instagram accounts come over and start doing voiceovers. You know, right. guys that, guys that you know, Derek Wolf. Um it works for Spiceology and does like yeah, makes yeah. amazing food. Like his videos were always just the food. Well, Derek started doing voiceovers. Um, Mosaic grilling with dad, another guy yeah, that I came yeah. up with. Like he he was I followed and talked to Mac back when he had eight thousand followers. You know, early days. Mac came over to TikTok, started doing voiceovers, and now he's at like eight hundred thousand on on TikTok. You know, so like all these guys started doing that. I've been preaching TikTok for two years, CJ. Like yeah. I've been trying to, I've been trying to tell all these guys to get over to TikTok for two years, and no one listened. <laughs> Nobody came over. Al Dente Diva got me on TikTok. Really, like she was on TikTok before me. She is the reason I'm even on TikTok. And and when she got on, and I got on. I started telling my buddies to get on TikTok, and a few of them did, but they didn't really commit to it like like right, I did, right. like T did. But now, you're hard pressed to find anybody that that does barbecue on TikTok or on Instagram that's big on Instagram that didn't eventually give in and say, you know what, you guys are right, TikTok is something, and now they're there. You know, my I've boy said, Bama, Bama Grill Master. No. Yeah. Um, I've noticed that too, man. Tim's um, man, he came over. Yeah, I've noticed that too. Uh, seen a lot of the same people. I, this little community that we're a part of with this YouTube group, you know, I'm seeing. I, I've been talking about TikTok on at least on the hot seat, just kind of bringing it up for a while now, because it has such a stigma, especially with a lot of you know the barbecuers that 
TikTok is just like Charlie DeMillo dancing for no fucking reason, right? Look, there's people, CJ, people are, and this isn't like a knock against anything or anyone, right. but people are blindly loyal to things. Yeah. Right? Like we all are. We're yeah. all, like I am, I am blindly loyal to Yingling Lager. <laughs> because I'm from the East Coast, New Jersey, PA, where where it's brewed, right. and I love it. Most people will say it's a shit beer, and they don't like it. You know? Like, I love it. I'm blindly loyal. People right. are blindly loyal to Traeger Grills. People are blindly loyal to Instagram, and they don't want to test or try anything else. That's I did. very true. You did. It, if you want to be successful as any kind of influencer – you have to roll with some changes. You have to do some things and and find the next hotness and you, you know, try to, you know, get the next, uh, you know, griddle, you know, or whatever and, and you know, branch out. Um, Josh uh, made a comment. Uh, he just recently got on TikTok. Um, it's Grok Boys Barbecue, right? Yeah. That's your, that's your following. So there you go. Yep. Um, yeah. So Grok Boys Barbecue, like a lot of people, I've had this discussion recently. Um you know, and Josh, like, I'm glad that Josh said that because it kind of made me think about it. Like, I'm, it's hard because Grork Boys Barbecue is my business. Like, right. I have a mobile barbecue business. Um, I have a trailer. I do catering. I do graduation parties. I go to breweries and wineries. Like, I'm waking up at 3 a.m. to start the start the fire. Like. You know, I, I have a barbecue catering business and it's called, it's named Quirk Boys Barbecue. Right. Um, that's what I talked about earlier, the legacy I'm trying to build, you know, but it's hard because on TikTok and social media, I kind of view them as two different things. Like my business is personal, like my business is my business, but social media is me. Like I view social media as me, as my personality. If a brand wants to work with me, if a brand wants to work with me, they don't want to work with Grork Boys Barbecue, my right. business. They want to work with Matt Grork because I am who I am. I do what I do, and that's who they want. Um, so I kind of view it two different ways. That's why on my on my TikTok, you'll see at the top it says Matt Grork, but yeah. my my yeah. at is Grork Boys Barbecue. Um, you know, but there's a lot of people that I'm sure that know me as Grok Boys Barbecue, but don't even know my first name. <laughs> you know? That's funny, man. So. All right. Um, I'm going to give you back to Dutch. He's going to ask a few more questions, and then we'll try <laughs> to wrap this thing up. We're on hour two. So, I uh, I'm glad we went more than an hour. Yeah, I mean, that's not – that's that's like I said, it's not always that hard, but when we <laughs> – we've had a couple three-hour shows before, and I feel like this is heading that way. And then we've had a four-hour show, Ooh. and that was our third show of the week. That was back when we were young and foolish, and we uh, <laughs> we did one on a Thursday. We did one on a Sunday because the guy in, on a Sunday was from the UK. Oh, man. And then we did a Monday to fit in. Why are you timing me out? Go ahead. Because the person who booked these shows was young and foolish. <laughs> Don't throw me under the bus with you there, brother. Hey, you 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 went to you went to war with me, buddy. <laughs> and I got the battle wounds to prove it. <laughs> Three of them, one liver and two kidneys. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um Josh and Babe ask, Josh has been in and out while while he's going through what he's going through at the hospital, but he was asking, what is your TikTok name? And that's Matt Grork, right? My TikTok is at Grork Boys Barbecue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Everything, every, all my socials are all at Grork Boys Barbecue. Okay. Um, CJ, question for you out of the chat. What? Yeah. What Jerry called tonight a long, deep night asking for the company – and this comes from a potential sponsor at www.woodenbuttplugs.com. It is not a long, hard night. <laughs> that deep. 
<laughs> sorry, sorry, Matt. I, uh, I forgot to warn you about one of our potential sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> I knew Matt would get a kick out of that, so I had uh, to. Have. You're a good sport, man. I love it. Dude. That's funny. Okay, uh, Russell at Raspberry Rock wants to know, Matt, do you ever get confused with Matt groaning? Matt if groaning. I remember, right, that is the creator of The Simpsons. Simpsons. Yeah, yeah, The Simpsons, I was going to say. The last name. No, I've guess. never, listen, I'm a huge Simpsons fan, you know, but no, the last name I've never, uh, no, I've never gotten that. I've never, oh. I don't think my last name sounds like any. You know, anything else? It's I weird. Don't think either. It's weird, man. All right, CJ Justin Timberlake butt plug. Ah, it all makes sense now. Thank you, Elton. Yeah. I like it's that. It's not, not nice, Elton. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, Genos or Pats? Oh, mm -hmm. neither. I was okay. gonna say, I knew that was coming, man, because most <laughs> people from Philly don't like, or from that area, don't like either. Yes, yeah, so look, I get like Facebook is famous for this, um, at least in my town where I teach. And like I said, I teach and I live in different areas, but um, you know, you get people on Facebook and say, ah, where can I get the best pizza in town, or where can I get the best cheesesteak in town? And my answer. Like every time I see it, whether I know the person or not, I always answer it and I comment and I say my backyard. <laughs> like that's it. Like, that's very true. But no, there are like Geno's and Pats are your very touristy places. Right. Like I did a fundraiser when I first started the business. It's how I kicked off my business. Um, you know, I had some good friends that I met on Instagram come and help me. Powerhouse barbecue. Uh, just the man, he's from Australia, but lives in Georgia. Um, my buddy, Jeremy, uh, who, who is just incredible dude. Uh, they all came down. My buddy, Scotty, uh, barbecue, he's on IG. Like they all came to support me in my business and we did a fundraiser and, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, uh, I forget what we were even talking about. What were we even talking about? Geno's and, and Pats. Oh, yeah. So I took them all to Philly. Like, and we went to Geno's and Pats because we had to. Like, because it's a tourist from, thing to do. Like, my one buddy, like, Jeremy is from, Jeremy's from Canada. Um, Greg was from Georgia. Like, they've never been to Philly. So they had to go to Geno's and Pats and take the picture in front of the sign, you know? Like it's a very touristy place, but right, there's right. a ton of there's a ton of steak places. Um, DL Sandro's in Philly, Jim Steaks in Philly. There's so many good steak places in Philly that are really, really good cheese steaks. Nowhere near what you're gonna get at, at Pat's or Gino's. But listen, if it's three AM and you're leaving the bar in Philly, you're not <laughs> you, you're not, you, you don't really have a problem with a Pat's or Gino's steak. And if you go, you're probably taking down two of them. Uh, oh, you know. All right. Um, Gorgonzola cream sauce for prime. Oh. oh, yeah. That was phenomenal. Is it better than horseradish? Oh, it's not better. It's different. It was different. And that's why I did it. I'll tell you why I did it for the person that asked that question. First off, I'm a huge okay. Oh, you asked it. I'm a huge, <laughs> I'm a huge blue cheese gorgonzola, like stinky cheese fan. Like oh, yeah. no. love it. You eat it all day. So, but I'm also a huge, huge horseradish person on my prime rib. Like I don't even I don't even want a horseradish cream sauce. Just give me horseradish. Yeah, let me and I'll shave it myself. I'll smear horseradish on the prime rib and take a bite. Like that's how I eat my prime rib with just smeared horseradish. Um, but so leading up to me doing that YouTube video and the, and the TikTok and all that, I was like, man, everybody was doing prime ribs, obviously because of the holiday. So right. every single prime rib video I saw on YouTube, on TikTok, on Instagram, 
all had a horseradish cream sauce, horseradish cream sauce, horseradish cream sauce. I was like, I got to do something different. And right. I was like, man, Gorgonzola cream sauce is phenomenal on prime rib on beef in general. So right. I went with that and, you know, it's super simple, um, takes longer than you would think, but super simple, like very minimal ingredients. You need Gorgonzola, you need heavy cream and like some salt and pepper. Like that's it. It's super simple. Um, so yeah, that's what I went with, but I can't say that I like one better than the other. Honestly, I'm a horseradish guy more than the blue cheese cream sauce when it comes to beef. All right. Um, geez. How many more do you want me to do, CJ? Because I got a ton over here. But <laughs> the I, top three or four, I don't know. I mean, I you, I'm, like, pretty, I'm, I, I'm pretty good with like, my questions. I I've always, gotten everything I need to learn out of them. So Yeah, you get like the people – the questions I always get is people are either asking me about social media and how I grew and how things like that happen and, or just like meat stuff, like how to cook this, how to cook that. And I'm like, <laughs> right, well, then, I like some off the wall questions. I like these off the wall questions. Okay. Like, well, then, Russ, yeah, I'm going to tell you that because uh, I'll have to scroll back through for a couple, but a <laughs> um, couple more on the serious side, transitioning to the Canadian, or I mean, uh, off the wall side. <laughs> the uh, Canadian side. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, these next two are from Russell. In your opinion, what is the most important YouTube analytics step? Man, now keep in mind, I'm pretty new to YouTube, so I'm like, I'm just learning, but I think it's pretty equal across the board that watch time is huge. Um, oh, yeah. You know, like just to, to keep people engaged and watching your video for as long as they do, um, for as long as the video is. If, if I post a five minute YouTube video, if people are only watching it for 50 seconds and clicking off, that video is terrible. It's not going to do anything. Right. So I'm still trying to figure that out, right? Like I'm still, I just posted a video today and I don't think it's doing very well, but it's a great video. Like it's the fried rice video. I love yeah. it. Yeah. It's a new, it's a new grill that most people aren't familiar with. Like I thought maybe it would be good and it would keep people's attention, but it doesn't look like it's doing that well. Um, I don't know the answer to that, but. Them little round black stones are fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like it's listen, I had a Blackstone. I, I gave it to my my neighbor, but because exactly like I loved it, but I got the opportunity to play with this one. And you guys know it's just fun playing with something different. And well, our buddy uh, Jared from Barbecues and Bottles. Yeah, yeah, I was one of those. He's been rocking one of those Cuisinart roundabouts for a while now. It, it's cool, I mean, man. It's they cool. look pretty it's, freaking cool. It's different. I mean, it's a little. It takes a little getting used to it because you don't have anything to catch the food. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, like the Blackstone does. Um, you, so you could lose some food. Like, that's what I was wondering too. You crack an egg and it. <laughs> yeah. Like, if it's not level, certainly. Yeah. Um, or, or if you just drop the egg and then. <laughs> dude, that, I'm going to so steal that, man. I love that. You yo, drop well, that here's, egg. And here's what's crazy. And this is, this is the epitome. Of and this kind of answers your question, Dutch, about like the the biggest like analytic and how important watch time is. You can go into any video you do on TikTok. I don't know if Instagram gives you watch time stats. I don't think it does. I don't think um, so. Either. But I know TikTok and YouTube both do. Uh, you know, my average watch time, like the video I posted today, the the fried rice video. It's a five minute, 30 second video. I think my watch time, my average watch time is like 250, somewhere around there. No. So it's like about half, which is okay, but it's not going to make it viral. Um, you know, it's not going to get 10,000 views. Um, my TikTok video of me dropping those three eggs. All right, CJ, and this is the funny part, like, I haven't had, I told you, I haven't had a video hit a million in a month. Right. Right. It's been a month. 
I've had a couple, two, three hundred thousand, and those are viral, but they're not a million. Um, right. You know, I and I've been making some great content, like the Prime Rib. I've done some right, awesome right. stuff. I've posted videos yeah. that I hit post, and I'm like, damn, this is going to go viral. This is going to get ten million views, <laughs> and it and it does nothing. Right. Right. So I've been busting my ass all month working, trying to get that, trying to get it. And then I go outside because I saw Al Dente Diva do it in a video of hers. And I go like this with three eggs and it gets 1.2 million views. I was one of them. That shit was it funny to me. me. I thought it was cool. It took me <laughs> eight seconds. It took me eight seconds to film it. Right. It's like it was a 14 second video on TikTok. And out of those, or no, it was 15 seconds the video was. Guess what my watch time on that video was? 14 seconds? 15.5. How's that? Because people were watching it more than once. <coughs> uh, right. Which is also a huge analytic. Right. And I know it is on YouTube too. If someone goes and watches a Cooking with CJ video, and then they click and they're like, man, I like this guy. I'm going to watch another video. That's huge for you. Oh, yeah. They want the algorithm wants you to keep people on there. They want repeat business and they want yeah. watch time. So the reason okay. that video got to 1.2 million and is still growing is because people were watching the whole thing and more. Yeah. Like watching the beginning and being like, oh, shit. I you know, and then scrolling out. Whereas a so video you that also I do. Be, besides the watch time and all that, do you engage with the comments? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, like, try to, I try. I know it's hard it. with a million and a half, it's, but like on YouTube, you know, you're at 35,000, whatever. Yeah. The comments you get on there, do you answer your comments? Yeah, I try to as much as I can. Like, yeah. I'm not on it on YouTube. I'm getting better at going because right. it's a little harder on YouTube. Like, because. I'll click and then the comments will disappear. And then there's all kinds of other videos and I got to scroll like on my phone. You, right. the, the YouTube platform's a little, the app. Do you have the little, YouTube studio app? I do. Get that. It's a lot easier to answer comments on that. Oh, cause it, it just shows comments. It just right? shows the comments. Like you go yeah. to the comments. That's a good drop idea. Them out, put them on. Instead of going to actual YouTube app and yeah. scrolling through the video, all that bullshit. That's good, I didn't even think about that. Answer them on, idea. answer them on your YouTube studio app. That's a good tip. Life and that changes. does help the algorithm, right? Mm -hmm. So early on with TikTok, like I wasn't doing that much. I would occasionally, but I wasn't doing a whole lot. And I was doing like thumbs up, fist bump, smile, <laughs> like stuff like that, right? Which is lazy. Um, and then my buddy Sonny, that dude can cook, who has like, I don't yeah. know, 3 million followers or something. We were on the phone one day and he was like, yo, Matt, I noticed like, you know, I notice you don't really comment a whole lot to your to your people that, you know, you don't answer your comments a whole lot. And right. I said to him, I was like, I kind of took offense to it. And he would tell you this. I got a little defensive. I was like, well, I comment. I, I, I think I answer everybody. And he's like, no, you put an emoji. Right. He's like, you don't answer them. Like, you know, there's a difference in the algorithm is so friggin smart that the algorithm knows if you're just hitting a smiley face emoji yeah or if you're actually typing hey thanks so much i really appreciate the support or hey check out you know this seasoning that's what i used or you know stuff you know like what's that. funny is i i answer most of my comments on youtube that way you know i'll put a full answer in there or at least thank you or whatever yeah, but what I've been doing on Instagram, I I do do a lot of emojis, like yeah. fist bump, cheers, yeah. whatever. So I mean, it's pretty interesting, and I don't get a lot of comments on my uh <laughs> my TikTok video, so I don't have to stress about that one too much. Yeah, but. it's it's a fine line, man. You just gotta, you know, what you just it it has so much to do with just experimenting with stuff too. Like I've there's a couple people you'll notice if you look at some bigger accounts, you'll notice some accounts posting with no hashtags now. Oh, really? Like, they'll just post and not use hashtags and see if that triggers something different. Because TikTok is changing the algorithm so much. It's like, what works and what doesn't, nobody knows, you know? Yeah. Even someone with 1.6 million followers can lose 2,000 followers in a week. 
Like I've yeah. never in two years I've been on TikTok, I've never lost followers. I've always gained more than I've lost, you know. Right, right. Obviously, people unfollow you, but you don't know it when you're gaining thirty thousand and losing ten. You know. Yeah. You don't you don't notice that you're losing. But this past week, yeah, I've, it's weird, man. But it also hasn't been just me. It's been a lot of larger accounts have noticed it. And I've gotten the same thing from other people. So that's what's wonky about it. Like you just, you, you never have an answer for the algorithm. Yeah, that's true. And it's probably evolving and changing every day too. It so. is. You just got to, you just got to keep grinding. You yep. try as hard as you can to not get beat up about it and stress about it. Um, you know, especially as a, as a larger creator, because it, it does like, it's frustrating hearing people say that like, Oh, TikTok's irrelevant, this and that you're like, well, TikTok's paying my paying some bills right now. You right. Know? So it's not irrelevant. Like, Oh, why do you care about how many followers you have? Well, cause followers equals money it's in the true. business world. Like yeah. from brands, like brands aren't hiring me to represent like Cuisinart isn't hiring me because I, you know, have blue eyes like uh, like and have a good beard when i grow it you know nice. like, yeah. like they're hiring me because i have 1.6 million followers and i that can you know present their brand and uh you know that's that's kind of how it is and, and instagram was there for a long time and they still are but tiktok is quickly you know taking up some space at this space there I agree for sure. All right, Dutch, you got some more questions, man. And bless you. I saw you sneeze. Thank you. That's about the fourth time tonight. I think I'm allergic to something in here. Oh, I know what it is. It's your freaking bullshit. Um, all right. bullshit. Oh, nice. Uh, okay. Now we're going to get into a little bit of the uh, funner off the wall questions. <clears throat> and most of these come from north of the border. Yeah. They a lot of these come from Russell at Raspberry Rock, but the first one comes from our buddy Smoking Joe's Pet Barbecue. We were talking about the horseradish earlier. What part of a horse does that come from? You <laughs> say <laughs> oh, horseradish cream, I think it's kind of a dead giveaway. Oh, yeah, come man. on. This is, this is not that show. <laughs> Just say it. Uh, Look at that. He's loving it. Shut up, CJ. All right, I'll shut up. <laughs> okay, you you really I just if, don't have an answer. Yeah, if you're <laughs> uncomfortable, you don't have to answer that one. All right, if uh, this is okay, now we're on the Russell Hour. Shit. Hour three, Russell Hour. Uh, Matt, if you could fly, would you use your power to help with traffic reports or fly to the moon just to check it out? If I could fly. Screw traffic, man. I hate traffic. I'd rather never drive ever. I'd go to the moon in a heartbeat. Yeah, that would be dope. All right. I'd fly back to 1987 and never use the word dope again. Hey, there is nothing wrong with dope. <laughs> I still use dope. You know, I think I think you should fly back to about your senior year of high school and not get that dolphin to the crack tattoo. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, let's see. If Clubber Lang was coming at you with a roundhouse, what's your next move? Run. <laughs> Running. That's a good that's a good answer right there. That's all you need. You probably run. Do your Forrest Gump impression and just keep running. Do, run. Do my best. Run for yeah. it. So I, I bought my uh I bought my son, he's six. I bought him uh the Oculus. Oh yeah. VR yeah. set. So I was obviously playing with it and there's a, a game called Creed um, off the movie. Right. And it's like Mike Tyson's punch out, right? Like you're, you're in the yeah. ring and you put this, you put the Oculus on and you're like your fists and you're, you're in the ring. Like you look down yeah. and you're in the ring and the first, it was just the demo version because the full thing costs like 30 bucks. But I did the demo because I wanted to see what it was like. And I was in the ring with a dude that straight up looked like Clubber Lang. 
big, huge, <laughs> ripped, big black dude, like six five, and he's coming at me, and it's as real as it could possibly look. And I did the thing, and, and I knocked him out, and it was on an easy level. It was done. I take it off, and I give it to my six year old. I'm like, Adric, try this. Like, it's so cool. You're gonna box, and he's always fighting and punching me. So I thought he would like it. He put the things on. Two seconds later, he takes it off and goes, no, uh uh-uh, I'm not fighting that guy. No. <laughs> and he walks away. Like, that's how real it was to him. He was like, no, uh-uh, no, dad, no, you take that. It was crazy. So, yeah, yeah I'd run. Yeah, yeah. I would do what Adric did. There you go. Smart kid. You, uh, Dutch, you froze? You good? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, you know who's into the Oculus thing is Pat McAfee, the old Colts punter. <laughs> he's no, excellent. That, that guy's a crack up. I listen oh, to him. He's excellent. Yeah, I listen to McAfee too. All right. I got just a couple more here as I scroll back through. And uh, oh, there's the clubber link. No, uh, we don't need that one. That was hobos. If there was one food that was a fountain of youth for you, but you had to eat two pounds of it every day, what food would it be? I'll take out 30, 32 ounces of a ribeye steak every day like it's my job. <laughs> well, it kind of is your job, man. Yeah. Uh, TikTok. <laughs> steak, steak TikTok. There you yeah, go. done, man. Give me a ribeye steak every day of the week. All right, you answered that one. Oh. It's doing pretty well for me. I mean, people people ask me all the time how I eat all this steak and stuff, and like, I, I fool people though. I don't eat as much food as as much food as I cook. That's all right. All right, Kent, come on, <laughs> muscle up. No, I'm uh, okay. I'm gonna throw this one back to you. All right. Because Keith Betteg just put in the chat. I, that was the only question I was going to ask. All uh, right. Go for it. All right. So we have another lifetime question here that one of our moderators absolutely insists that we ask every week. So Mount Rushmore, if you could build your own personal personal Mount Rushmore, who would you put on there? Four people you love and admire. They could be famous. They could not be famous. Go. Wow. That's a deep dive question, buddy. Wow. Um, Though You got your sign there, right, Kent? I'm, that's what I'm reaching for. He's thinking too long. Put the sign up. Man. God. My dad. Matt, it's not that hard, Matt. No, my dad. Dad, definitely. My dad's number one. He's the, he's the one real person. <coughs> <laughs> Half the time we have to hold that sign up for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Um, my dad is is number one. Um, look, I love uh, I love like not that I'm like a huge history buff, but like Abe Lincoln, like just the uh, how do you like how do you not like there. Um, so that's my dad. There's my one history buff, uh, answer. And then let's go athlete. Um, let's break it into sports and go with, uh, MJ is, is my generation. Just go best athlete ever to play a sport. Um, and then let's go, uh, since, since we're, since we're doing what we do, let's put food, um, let's put food in here and, uh, Goat of food. Let's go with um. Ah, uh, this one's so hard because there's so many. There, I'll film it and I'll tag Kusa in it if you want to put Kusa. <laughs> <laughs> um. Ah, oh, food. Let me. I I can't even. Let's go with let's go with Tootsie. Who's that? Tootsie, Pit, Pitmaster Tootsie from right. uh, down in Texas. What's what's the uh, 
Oh, from um, uh, Snow's Barbecue. Snow's Barbecue. Oh, oh, the the, the, barbecue. the old lady that works yep. the barbecue every Saturday. And that works everybody else. Yep. Hey, from can, we should do that when we're in Texas. I want to go. go I want to break, oh, break bread with Tootsie. Snow's I, Barbecue. It, CJ, if we did that, I'd have to bring an apron along because I'd be walking around with the sausage chub. <laughs> that's all right. I want to I want to break bread with Tootsie, man. I said that when I watched the show. Awesome. Yeah, I saw it. You know, I watched her when I she was, you know, whatever show I was watching on. Um Chef's when, Table. Uh, huh? It was Chef's Table, I think. No, I I was watching the one of the the Food Network, you know, visit travel channel ones, whatever. And they were, yeah, yeah. They were they were at Snow's barbecue and they were talking uh to her. Or well, about her to her and all that stuff, and and about the actual, you know, Snow's barbecue. Yeah. And um, I don't know if Alton's still in the chat, but uh, when we went, or me and my wife went to Austin last year, and we met up with a lot of the YouTubers, and and we went to Mueller's Barbecue in yeah. Taylor, Texas, and uh, uh, fuck, I forgot his name, Mueller, uh, not the dad, but the son who, hey. was, huh? No. Was it Louis? No, it's it's Wayne Miller, I think. Mueller. Wayne Mueller. Mueller. Louis yeah. Mueller is the name of the, the place. The right. dad. That, the, that was the dad, if I yeah. remember. So Wayne Mueller, uh, he's the one that you know was very hospital uh, hos hospitable to us, you know, fed us, spent an hour with us. I did yeah, Wayne. Wayne, that's it. Wayne, I yeah. did I did, actually did a YouTube video on CJ's Q of it, you know, you know, going through the whole thing. And uh he was actually at Snow's Barbecue just eating. So he was sitting, you know, the two guys were interviewing and talking or whatever. And the next picnic table over was Wayne Mueller. And I'm like, hitting my wife. I'm like, that's the guy. That's the guy. She's like, yeah, I see him. I'm like, but that's the guy. So, <laughs> that's awesome. uh, you know, I get starstruck easily. I don't know. For real, man. That's cool. Yeah. I yeah, was, was awesome round that out. Uh, I would, you know, four totally different, uh, categories there yeah definitely uh we got uh miss uh miss mona's on, on the chat uh i think she's probably watching on cj's q uh ramona she's one of our great followers and she said cj has wonderful replies really appreciate the personality and kindness cj bear thank you sweetie appreciate it Ramona uh, is a true sweetheart right there yeah definitely all right next question oh shit now i gotta find one <laughs> This is why we can have nice things, Matt. This is why we can have nice things. <laughs> okay, Smoking Joe's Pet Barbecue wants to know, has anyone ever offered you money to mention them on Instagram or TikTok? Yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, wow. But, well, I mean, that goes to... Well, not product placement, but, like, other influencers. Oh, like as in like an account. like if I said, "Hey, shout me out on TikTok." Oh no, no has anybody no. ever done that to you? No, oh. no. I mean, in terms of brands or like a product stuff like that, people will. Um, yeah, that's all the know, time. That's look. I have like I have an amazing team that's behind me. Um, I have an agency that oh, wow. that represents me. And gets me brand deals, um, the digital renegades, the food renegades. Um, yeah. is my agency and Evan and Christina are my agents, and they're just incredible. They're excellent as uh, what they do. As good as we are at slinging food and barbecue, they are that good. And then some at at, at managing, you know, the brand deal side of it. You know, right. Um, so that's where this has really become another career for me um, because of them. And, you know, the combination of us working together uh, is something that, you know, I could have never like nine months ago, 10 months ago, you tell me that I'd have representation because of my social media presence is like insane. Um, so they kind of handle all that stuff. Um, if I get a deal or I, if someone reaches out to me and I think it's something that could be significant, then, you know, I'll, I'll give it to them and let them handle that part of it. Um, you know, but then there's also like, there's a human side of it too. And, uh, you know, I recently had 
uh, I get DMs like crazy and I try to answer and I think I do a pretty good job of it, but I try to answer as many as I can. Um, you know, there's some that really catch my eye and, uh, you know, I had a, a kid recently, um, DM me on, on Instagram and, uh, told me that he's just passionate. He's like 17, 18 years old, passionate, passionate about barbecue. Um, he's from down South and makes his own sauce has, has a, he has a, a spicy sauce an original sauce and, I mean, he's got it bottled and he has a website and you can buy it and, you know, this whole thing. And he, he DM'd me and said, hey, Mr. Grork, like I'm like, Mr. Grork, like only my students call me <laughs> Mr. Grork. You can call me Matt. Um, you know, when I respond, they freak out. They're like, oh, my God, I can't believe you answered. And, uh, you know, he said, do, do you think I could send you a bottle of my sauce? You know, it's my own. It's my grandparents recipe and we've been selling it for a decade and i took it over and now i'm running it and making it and um do you think i could send you some and maybe you could review it on your page and you know i'm like yeah like this is a kid like right i'm a teacher like it's kind of in me to want to help the kid um yeah. you know i'm not going to send that to my my agent and say, Hey, milk this kid for a hundred bucks or, you know, for me to post. Right. Um, so I wrote him back and I said, yeah, man, of course. Like I looked, I, I, I clicked on his Instagram and I looked and made sure it was legit. And he had his website linked. So I went to the website and I said, I saw the sauce and you could buy it. And I was like, yeah, man, I would love to, like, I'd love to support you and help. Um, so before I even answered back, I just went to his website and I bought a couple bottles. <laughs> That's so um, yeah. You know, I'm not going to have some 17 year old kid send me free stuff, you know, um, <laughs> who's grinding with a family business. Right. You know? Like right. that's what, that's what we're doing. You know, I'm doing the same thing. I'm a small business. Um, we'd go under if we were just giving people free food. Right. So I went on and I, he had PayPal linked up. So that makes it that much easier. Um, so I bought a couple bottles. I did that two days ago. It came here today. So you'll see a video pretty soon, you know, in the next few days, I'll make some ribs and I'll use his sauce and I'll shout him out. And it's just the right thing to do, you know, in, in my mind. You don't know what that kid, when he sees that video. Right. Like that's, and that's he the cool is thing. Gonna be like calling all his buddies yeah. saying, you got to check this out. Yeah. I offered him a bottle. You know, I was going to ship it to him and everything. He bought a couple bottles for me, and this kid's just going to be yeah. through the damn roof with yeah. enthusiasm. And that's what's fun about it, man, like to be able to do okay. something like that. And that's happened a couple times. So, um, you know, there's another small small sauce company that, that sent me, you know, a couple bottles. And um, older guy, like my age, um, follows me. I follow him. Um, whoa, whoa, you know, whoa, whoa, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy on the older guy. I'm the old guy on the screen here. <laughs> um, you know, so same deal. You know, I'll, I'll do a video for him. And, you know, I'm not trying to make money off it. I just want to try to help people out the same way that people helped me. That's awesome, man. You know. All right. CJ, I got one more. And I'm okay. going to let you guess where it came from. Russell, it says, can you explain the agency deal, uh, what they do, who they are, what percentage they take for the deals and how you got involved with them? So um, in terms of the agency, uh, you know, social media influencer agencies are not like a new thing. Um, apparently they've been around for quite some time now. Um, you know, there are 11 year old kids on YouTube <laughs> making slime and making millions a year. Right. You know, my, my six year old watches Ryan and I have to go to target and buy Ryan toys for Christmas. And this kid's making $8 million a year, you know, on YouTube. Um, so the influencer marketing market isn't new. Um, it's new to me 
as of, you know, say a year ago um, when I started to really grow. And uh, essentially what they do is exactly what you would think. They, they are my agent for any deals that, that I could potentially get with a brand or a company. Um, they, they negotiate, they know my value in the market better than I do. Um, they can negotiate better than I do. They are professionals. They are, um, great at what they do. And it allows me to focus on what I'm great at doing and that's making content. Um, so that's kind of how it works. Um, I don't really want to get into like percentage stuff. um, No, that's, that's not that's kind of like contractual things but i'm sure you could take a guess it's you know it's not 50 50. um you know it's certainly for me to be involved in in an agency and i think for any influencer you have to truly believe that the percentage that you're giving them or that they're earning and i'll i'll rephrase it and tell you they're earning it (laughs) um you know because they're making dozens of phone calls every day that i don't even know about to try to get me work, um, which is, which is awesome. But, uh, there is no way that I would make, there's no way that I would make the amount of money on a deal by myself without them. You know, like the, the percentage that they get is above and beyond, uh, what I would get on my own, you know, try to negotiate for myself. In addition to being a teacher and being a dad and being a content creator yeah. and cooking every day right. and running a barbecue business, like, do I want to be on the phone with like AT and T, being like, "Hey, I'll do a commercial for you"? Like, I don't, I'm not trying to, you know, negotiate with brands. Like, I don't have time for that. <laughs> Did you just talk into a remote? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's funny is this. What's funny is this is how big our phones were when we first got them, remember? Yeah, it's true. Back in the day. Uh, Mine came in a bag. (laughs) Shit. All right. How are we looking on questions, Dutch? Uh, I got one more from Russell, and um, these, like the last one, was from Russell. So he's he's had enough to drink. He's off the off the wall questions. He's getting back serious here again. (laughs) So, um. Uh, how do you place a value on views? How much would you expect to make on a one million on on one million views? You know, so is it the views? You know, what is it? Explain that to us. In please. terms of how how like TikTok monetizes, I guess it sounds like hey, he didn't refer to. You know, he was asking maybe like, maybe like with the agency or something like that. Like, how do they value? Like, they know you're getting millions of views a month. How do they find you? How do they find your value through those millions of views? Yeah, I think. I mean, with yeah, with with brands, I think. Um, you know, there's a there's a couple different factors. Like, I think that there's times that views mean more than the amount of followers you have. Right. Right. A brand can, you know, if you don't think that every brand, every company has software on their computer that they could type your name into and see all of your analytics in a a second, then you're lying to yourself. Like they know everything. They, They have software that tells them more about your account than you could ever know. Um, in terms of views and reach and engagement and all that kind of stuff. So, the, the software they have is is crazy. So it's a lot more than just followers. It's they want to see that engagement and right. your personality and what you're bringing to the brand and um, authenticity. And the, I think the, there's the, a lot of things like that. Did your filming skills yeah, or editing think, skills ever come into play? Yeah, I think that's part of it. You know, I, I mean, I think that there's, you know, there's some very polished, and professional editors and videographers on TikTok, you know, guys that I'm friends with um, that just have incredible content. Uh, Max the Meat Guy, Nick DiGiovanni, um, guys that just have incredible content. Yeah, Um, It's clean, it's crisp, it's like looks fully produced and edited. Like 
just beautiful. Um, I don't have that. I'm, I, but I also think that that's where my value lies. Like my value lies in the fact that I'm a 43 year old dad with two kids who's literally just carrying his iPhone around and filming what I'm doing. You know what um, I've found is that editing on TikTok is actually really easy. Yeah, it's, I mean the app is pretty user friendly. Yeah, it is user friendly. It's it's for the tech tarted out there. Yeah, it is definitely. Yeah, can't you can't you can jump right on and figure it out. Yeah, it's really not too bad. Yeah. Matt, I'm a I'm a grease monkey, so I don't. Yeah, I shit. <laughs> CJ sent me a Chromebook two years ago, and it took me till the night. Opened it. Oh. <laughs> it's just it's still got dust on the package. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's a combination. It's a combination of views and followers and all that kind of stuff. But you know, his question also like could have been directed towards like, like I said, the monetization part. Like in terms of what a million views of what would a video with a million views turn into in a monetary you know from a monetary standpoint like well, let, me, let me interrupt you this is this is what he said on the youtube ads generally pay him uh three dollars and fifty cents on average per a thousand views but for product pace placement he he goes between 20 and 60 dollars per thousand views and that's what he's talking about okay so yeah he's, so i guess it's like how do you determine like let's you know say you know uh XYZ spatula company said you need to use this on your new Cuisinart. How what 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 would they expect from you, I guess? Right. I think um, you know, I think there's a there's a value that you have from a number standpoint as as how many followers you have and views that you get, your engagement. Um, that might be five thousand for a video, whether or not you're doing a campaign. Maybe a campaign involves three videos. That right. you have to produce and for those three videos you're going to get 10 grand from the brand um right. for over the course of a month so for one month we need you to film three videos and we'll pay you 10 grand um you know do, so, they, do they expect a certain amount of views on those no videos? there hasn't there hasn't been it's not like that like because it, keep in mind to protect yourself and the brand that you're working for right you have to you have to, uh, you have to, what's the word I'm looking for? You have to divulge that it's an ad or a sponsor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know that on TikTok specifically, when you use the hashtag ad or hashtag sponsored, that video does not get pushed. Really? Like the way that a normal video would. Right. Right. So I just did an ad for Eckridge Sausage. I posted it tonight, right before I came on here. Right. Um, so you could go and look at that, and you'll see it's probably one of the worst viewed videos that I've done in 10 days. Right. Because I did a hashtag ad. But you have to do that, because you could get sued if you don't. Well, do you mean some sausage? Do you mean this sausage? Cartridge, baby, yes. That's exactly what I used, yep. So we've so. I've had some conversations with other YouTubers about this, too, is – Say you're you're doing a video for XYZ special company and you're doing it as an ad and it's not gonna produce for you. Like so you're not gonna make money on on YouTube, TikTok, whatever, right? Right. So what you need to charge is you know something the value of a real video would do for you. If that makes sense, if not more, you know. So you gotta you gotta think that you might not grow or you might not have a good video with it so you're not going to make a lot of money off that video so you need to make the upfront video right right yeah like that money the money that you're making from the brand is going to be more than what you'll make from the monetization of Got the it. app yeah um, that's, that's kind of what we were going with before too we were talking about that yeah like I, I obviously yeah. like the video I did yesterday or whatever that had one million, one point two million views. Like my views for that day are sky high because I had that one point two million from TikTok for that day in the creator program. I'm probably going to make like eighty bucks, where my average has been around fifteen to twenty. Got it. 
So because that video went viral, I'm getting like $60, $60 $70 more than I normally would because it went viral. Right. You know, <laughs> but you make 20 bucks a day for 30 days. That's not a bad monthly payment. Not at all. Not at all. Covers covers most people's car payments, if not more so. You know, we all, a lot of people will talk about, especially in the YouTube community, is, is if you can make enough to pay for groceries, Done. You're, you're freaking, you're, you're yeah. living high on the hog for sure. Yep. All right, can you got more questions, bud? No, I uh, let me double check. Oh, Darnell was asking, and I haven't received his answer back yet. He said, I think "What he was talking about, bitch. What was the the kid's Instagram? The I believe he meant for the barbecue sauce. I think the Darnell, you the barbecue Jack sauce. Who was that? Oh, what was?" Hold on. Give me give me 12 seconds. All right. Counting. <laughs> Don't say give me 10, 15 seconds. Now, he said 12. I'm holding them to 12. Six. Seven. I'm fast. Well, oh, okay. You must be so. like a gym coach or a gym teacher or something. <laughs> so these are two. These are the two small business guys just out hustling man they reached out to me that i went ahead and did what i said um so this is paulie g's barbecue sauce All right. llc paulie that, g's barbecue sauce that's the young man you were talking about earlier yeah this is the young kid okay yep paulie g's barbecue sauce llc this is a carolina carolina and then he has a spicy original. Um, and then I spoke to, this is Mulali's. Who? Oh. Mulali's rubs and sauces. So he's on Where, Instagram too. Where's that from? He's in Saginaw, Mi Michigan. Michigan. Okay, the funny thing is, we have a restaurant here in town, and it's called Lolly's East Side. Oh, there you go. And their actual last name is Malali. Oh, how about it? And they sell their own Thousand Island dressing, a light thousand, a barbecue sauce. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, don't so that's... Tell me. I thought you were going to show me something that came eight blocks down the road from my <laughs> house. And I'm crazy. Like, holy crap. All right, guys, get a screen grab. If yeah, you want. you'll have to somebody screenshot this and DM it to me. Uh, I'll yeah. send it to these guys, and they'll uh, they'll be pretty happy about it. That's awesome. Keep them up. Keep them up. All right, got it. All right. So I'm, you know, these are just a couple local, local like, you know, small not local but small businesses that are trying to you know, do their thing. And, you know, that's something that people like that reach out to me. And if I can do it and I can help, then I will, you know, and that's, that's kind of how I work. So Russell's I'm excited to try them. And, I, and I've already snuck them and tasted them and they're both good. Russell's offering you five bucks if you chug both bottles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Right before I go crawl in bed with my wife, that'll work out. Well. Like, hey, honey. <laughs> At least it's not a bean burger, so you can't yeah, duck out. Yeah, that is a good right. point. I know that is. <laughs> All right. uh, let's see here. All right, Dutch, you good? Yeah, we're good. We're good over here, brother. So. All right. Well, we almost hit three hours. I love it. That's awesome, Matt. It's been a while since we it's went. It's been a while since we did a three-hour or three-hour or show. Oh, you got it. And Keith Batag, who had to turn in because, well, he's an old fart. He is an old part. But we also love him because he's an old unediting fart. <laughs> yeah, he but, always likes to say fuck a bit of editing. <laughs> yeah. He said what he said was he got so much more out of this tonight than what he expected. So yeah. kudos to you, Matt. That's awesome. Well, kudos yeah. to you guys, man. Because he would he would never give CJ and I a compliment like that. <laughs> never, never. Guys, and I'm going to bet. So it's on you, brother. Good job. 
Hey, there's there's old Kurt. Kirby Q seasonings threw a thumbs up for you. Uh, Kurt just popped on. Yeah, he's been lurking this whole time. Don't let yeah. it fool you. He heard his name okay. being talking. He felt his spidey senses. Yeah, he's yeah. Like, what? <laughs> All right. So, uh, Dutch, why don't you say your piece, and then I'll let Matt wrap, and then I'll finish it up. All right. Uh, Matt, I can't reiterate enough of what uh, Keith said before he left. And uh, Russell says, tell Matt that I don't kiss many guys, but for you, he would make an exception. <laughs> Oh, them Canadian guys. You got to watch out for them. I know a couple. Um, and I got to say, uh, great job. Um, I learned a lot more tonight than than what I expected also. So thank you very much for the information. Um, Rub Love, uh, he, that kind of sounds sexual, but I... Oh, it's going to be fun. Of, it's kind of turning me on, too. So. Wait till our first commercial comes out. <laughs> All right. So, uh, oh, wait, we have a late arrival. Hey, Babe's in there. What's up, Babe? Hi, Bethany. How you doing? All right. If Josh is still listening, uh, he, you know, he's got his uh, fifth round of chemo going on right now. So, uh, you know, we're praying, you, praying for you, buddy. We'll talk to you soon. Matt, you got anything to say on the way out, brother? Man, I, I just appreciate it, guys. Like, I think you uh, – you know, I think you touched on it a little bit earlier, just talking about community. And, yeah. uh, you know, I think that's I think that's what this is about. And it's why we all do it. It's why we all started. Um, you know, I think we've all gained brothers and sisters through it. And, you know, you got one of them lurking in Kurt. You know, that's a dude yeah, that, yeah. you know, it's crazy. We, we both we all have our lives and things get busy, especially this year but man kurt and i'll catch up after a month not talking and it's like it's like we talked yesterday you know so uh you know that's Completely something agree. i'm thankful for and i'm thankful to have to be able to have a platform like this and to be invited by you know guys like you to kind of spread the word and just just have some fun man because that's what it's all about yes sir all right, Matt. Hey, Matt, I really appreciate you being on, dude. I, I know I've reached out to you a while ago, and, and we finally got this to work out. Um, like I said, I've been a fan for a while and, and following you and really interested in your journey and how things were going, and, and I'll keep following you, and uh, maybe I'll do at one of your steak smacking videos for you soon <laughs> or some shit like that and have some fun. Uh, but, again, man, you did a great job to us for, for us tonight. Three hours long and strong. Great job. Uh, stick and stay where you're at. Don't don't hang up just yet. Um, let me in the broadcast, um, guys. Thank you all for being here. If you drop the super chat in there, thank you so much for that too. Um, we will see you next week where we have uh, our guests uh, ja uh, Stephen and Jacqueline uh, for all the way from Trinidad. They will hey, be on. Huh? Question. Are we going to have a translator for Stephen? Uh, you know, I, I was thinking about inviting Johnny Mag, so we have a nice New England accent with a Trini <laughs> accent. We'll be all, and we'll get some Texas boys on here. We'll be all fucked up. So oh, there we go. There we go. Nobody will understand each other. It'll be you know maybe maybe uh, Russ Jones smoking ribs. There you get go that. from Louisiana. Yeah. I love it. It's in there. We'll uh, we'll get a moderator and uh, uh, that can type out the the uh, closed captioning. So. But and we also will have an announcement for you guys uh, next week too. So yep. if I were you, I would tune in. It's uh, it's kind of a big deal. So I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe, stay clean, wear a freaking mask. Don't buddy up next to people you don't know. And 